powered from the Perdomo Scott Studios on the Red Stage in Indian Trail, North Carolina, and broadcasting from a remote location with the Alec Bradley Lone Star Studios in Texas and the Tatawahi Studios in Black Mountain, North Carolina. Welcome to Primetime Special Edition 113. Tonight, it's our unofficial, unauthorized pregame show as we get ready to make predictions for the Scar Aficionado Top 25. We'll give you everything you need to know and what to expect for the big reveal. And as always, the Primetime Special Edition show is sponsored by Perdomo Cigars. Awarded Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year in 2014 by Cigar Journal, the Perdomo 20th Anniversary brand has consistently earned the highest scores in the industry and is a top seller in humidors around the world. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary blend requires tobaccos that have been carefully hand-selected and are well-aged for a minimum of eight years. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary is offered in three distinct wrappers, a smooth, creamy Ecuadorian Connecticut, a rich, earthy Cuban seed Nicaraguan Sun Grown, and a dark, oily Cuban seed Nicaraguan Maduro. Combining these beautifully bourbon barrel aged wrappers with thick, high priming binder and filler tobaccos gives each blend a balanced complexity with layers of rich flavors and smooth, elegant aromas. Perdomo Cigar is a family owned and operated company headquartered in Miami, Florida, with manufacturing and agricultural facilities in Esteli, Nicaragua. Perdomo's highly acclaimed cigar brands include the Perdomo Stage Selection Vintage, the Perdomo Double Age 12 Year Vintage, Perdomo 20th Anniversary, Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary, Perdomo Habano Bourbon Barrel Age, Perdomo Lot 23. Perdomo Mensa 70 and many more. For great tasting notes and pairing information, check out the Perdomo website at www.perdomocigars.com. And I want to mention Aganorsa Leaf. Great Leaf makes great cigars. Aganorsa Leaf stands out because of the distinctive flavor of our Corojo 99 and Criollo 98 seeds cultivated by Cuban agronomists on the best lands of Jalapa and Esteli, Nicaragua. When you smoke one of our JFR, JFR Lunatic, Guardian of the Farm, or Casa Fernandez cigars, you experience a unique taste and aroma that makes Aganorsa Leaf special. Smoke one today and enjoy the signature flavor of Aganorsa Leaf. And of course, we want to mention Drew Estate. Drew Estate's about to make someone a whole lot richer. During its freestyle live shows on the company's Facebook Live page, Drew Estate announced it will hold a Bitcoin sweepstakes with numerous incredible prizes during freestyle live events, including a grand prize of one filled Bitcoin to a lucky fan to be announced during the February 17, 2022 edition of Freestyle Live. Entry into this unheralded Drew Estate Bitcoin sweepstakes is simple. During three of the company's freestyle live event shows, October 15th, November 11th, and now upcoming on January 20th, 2022, the company will randomly select the names of five people who attend the online show and comment during specific times in each broadcast as potential winners of an assortment of fantastic prizes. The five winners from each of these three shows will create a contestant pool of 15 people eligible to win the grand prize Bitcoin. You can learn more on Drew Estate's Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash Drew Estate. And of course, visit the Drew Estate webpage at uh, drewestate.com. Remember all the live streaming for the primetime network of shows, as well as the California studios for the primetime show is sponsored exclusively by Drew Estate. Well, welcome, everybody. This is primetime special edition 113 as we kick off 2022. This is Will Cooper. I am in the Perdomo Cigar Studios on the red stage tonight, and I'm joined I guess in a remote location uh, with the Alec Bradley Lone Star Studios uh, by my regular co-host, Mr. Bear Duplissy. Uh, good evening, Coop. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm um, really excited to be here. I am actually in Michael's Tobacco Keller again, uh, broadcasting from the same place, just about five feet away from where I did my broadcast on Sunday with my own uh, Cigar of the Year list. So, uh, But uh, we'll talk about a, a less significant one tonight, I suppose. Well, I agree. I <laughs> that well, by part I agree to less. <laughs> uh, but no, good to have you. And uh, you had I know you had a very busy uh, Christmas vacation, um, and New Year's. Good choice of words there, Coop. Yeah, we're we're all anxious. By the way, I'm getting messages every day. When is the video going up? I That's am too. Um, so I'll, I mean, <laughs> I'll go ahead and say this publicly. I've actually spent way more time on this than I wanted to. Um. I, I did message uh, GalaxyCon um, uh, several times, actually. They, uh, in my waiting room, when I was getting ready to meet uh, Chevy Chase, I was told that it, the processing took a couple hours. And so I was like, oh, cool. I can have this up right away and, you know, be right. done with it. And, um, and well, I, 
after two days of waiting, I, te I messaged them. They said that, oh, it takes actually a few days. And I said, well, you should probably change that video because it says a couple hours. And they're like, well, the holiday, short staff, COVID, all this other stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's fine. I mean, I'm going to be patient on this. I mean, but, you know, I've got a lot of people waiting for this. So and I've met, so, I've messaged them two more times. So I've spent okay. way too much time on this. But it's interesting because other people had their videos up within hours. That's why. So, I, look, I've checked my junk and I've messaged them and they said it's coming. So okay, I, okay. Like, I'm not I'm not fucking around here. I promise. No, I know. I, we, your, 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 your integrity is not in question here. So nice. No. So so no. Damn. So. So the world is waiting. So just so you know that uh, th there you have the explanation tonight of what's happening. Um, maybe Joe Grow can run some interference. <laughs> I'm sure he's anxious. <laughs> he made this happen. But uh, but hey, let's pair. Why don't we just introduce our our our, uh, our panel tonight? Uh, because uh, we've expanded this show to include um, some additional folks. Uh, first uh, from the Smoking Syndicate, a member of the Scar Coop team, we have uh, the Bull Shark Ben Lee. Hey everyone, I'm mean, yeah, here in the mountains of North Carolina now, yep. and it is freaking cold up here now. It, by the way, and it was very ni it was nice and warm till you got here. I just want to say that because we were we were like in 70s and 80s in Charlotte, so so then you came and the temperature dripped. So, dipped, so. so I'm, yeah, <laughs> sorry was, about sorry I, that that happened. I'm not blaming you, but sorry it happened. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the day I got here was the high of the 80s, and right now it is 29 degrees. Yep. Yep, that's how it is around here. And of course, uh, coming at us as well from the great state of Illinois, uh, member of the Scar Coop team, Aaron Nielsen. Good evening, gentlemen. Good to be here. Good to see your faces. Happy New Year. And um, Ben, I don't have any sympathy for you coming from Illinois. 29 degrees sounds awfully uh, balmy, but uh, we'll, we'll power through tonight. <laughs> there you go. And finally, from the great state of Florida, uh, we, we got to have the, I'd say, the color analyst, the, uh, you know, someone f who can give us a lot of insights, who's kind of, I guess, on the other side of this, because he's, you know, he works in the business. He has been the recipient of many uh, ratings from CA. He is uh, the director of operations from Espinosa Cigars, Hector Alfonso. Gentlemen, live from the Knuckle Sandwich Studio, since I don't have a banner like you guys. I put, <laughs> you can see the t-shirt behind me. Yes, thanks for having me on. I, I always, I love this show. I absolutely love being on this show because, uh, and you know, Coop, that I am a nerd at heart. I am a cigar nerd at heart, so I really enjoy being on. Yeah. No, we appreciate it. And, and for folks who didn't know, Hector did the show last year. Um, he's really into this. Like, So this is, because we crunch numbers on this show. Um, this isn't the, I mean, there, there are folks who try to take their best shot at this and I'm not knocking them per se, but I think we've taken a very analytical and historical approach to this. Uh, Ben and Aaron, I know you're going through this for the first time. We wanted to have you a part of this. Um, I'm sure it will be a little baptism by fire tonight, but I think it'll also be a lot of fun for you guys. So, um, I hope you just have fun. That's the most important thing I want you guys, Ben, I want you to stay warm as well. I don't want you kind of like turning into a giant uh abominable snowman up there so. he looks he looks so cold there <laughs> oh, man i'm just a giant polar bear man so it's all good <laughs> the polar bear the tatawahe polar bear studios <laughs> <laughs> all right so hey why don't we before we kind of uh get started uh we have a tradition on special edition we've been doing this for a while um we don't know what bear is going to smoke tonight um but real quick, before, so we're going to have – Bear's going to have us pick that. But before we do that, what is everyone else smoking tonight? I'm lining up a, a Warzone Robusto. Warzone's a blend that made the list, the CA list last year. Blended by Hector Alfonso. So There you go. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I have a pre-release Warzone that, you know, like you said, I should have released these earlier. Uh, you should have released smoking. these earlier. It would have made, it would have made them the consensus higher. I am smoking a cigar that we make for Caravan called Fair Warning, a little barber pole that you've had. They're that, good uh, cigars. They're, they're, it's, you know, it's, it's not just a novelty. It's a really good cigar. And, yep. and that's been also 20th anniversary. So, oh, uh, great cigar. So, uh, you know, I've got a, I've got a couple of uh, – I got three sticks. That should carry me. I have uh, – I'm not too far from the humor in case I need a fourth. Are those still in the wild somewhere, Hector? They're uh, – you can find them – 
a lot of the the, the Lazonians have some. They they share among themselves, but there this hasn't been made in three years, I think. I need, oh, to, wow. I need to start trolling the my fellow Lazonians on the Lazona page. See if I can get some more yeah. of those. They're fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Aaron, what do you got? All right. Well, so tonight my first cigar is the Rocky Patel 60 in Toro. We may be talking about that cigar a little tonight. Yeah. Uh, I've also got the Monte Cristo 1935 anniversary. I've got, in honor of Bear, I've got the Dissident. Nice. And then I've also got two more. I've got the Bishop's Blend. Then I'm going to break out one for Hector as well. So I, wow. I'm, I'm, if I go through all five, uh, I might need an iron lung after the show, but that's fine. <laughs> He's loaded for bear, man. Oh, no. <laughs> he's he's gone heavy there. Hey. So, Ben, what do you got? Well, Ben can't feel start... his face, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> start out with the Fiat Lux uh, Genius tonight, as I was starting with. Um, and the rest of the lineup, I have a Tatawai T110 uh, Habano. And Jake Wyatt, Fourth Dimension, and the Robusto. And if we get to it, Casa Fuente Casa Cuba, doble seis. Nice. Hmm. nice, nice, nice. By the way, I just smoked. I just went through the review of the T one ten Reserva, and oh my god, have those cigars come around in the last like with a little age on them? Like they're they're smoking fantastic. Those and I was a little hesitant on the Reservas, but with a little more age on them, they're smoking really really good right now. So I, I was surprised. So, Bear, what are – and who do you want to select? I'll kind of stay neutral so we won't have a tie, but uh, like you, whoever you want to pick and select, we go ahead. Oh, I, I always want Hector to pick my cigar. Okay. He's, uh, All right, I, I'm going to uh, – uh, did, did, he, did, he say, did he say what you had available? I'm sorry. No, 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 not yet. No, but you're going to do the honors here tonight, Hector. Okay. So I've got um, – so I've got – to choose from, I've got the number one cigar from 2021 for Ellis Fumar takes the distant rave. I've got the uh, thanks to Brandon over here at Michael's Tobacco of Keller who handed me a uh, Blackwork Studio the Cato. Um, a cigar that's in contention tonight, the Rocky Patel Grand Reserve, and a cigar who uh, should have been. Um, should have been in contention, but you know what? The future, who knows what the future holds? The latest and greatest from yours truly, Mr. Alfonso. That's you, the Loranja Azulejo. Oh, thank you so much. So, what am I smoking to start things off tonight, sir? Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> decision. I think you should probably, uh, which, which is the second one that you popped up there? Um, the second one I popped up was the, uh, was the Blackwork Studio Cato. I think you should start with that one. Okay. Oh, wow. It's a good cigar. It's a good cigar. My pleasure, sir. Thank you so much for picking my cigar tonight. There you go. So, so, so get set. And by the way, just I haven't mentioned, but um, my I have two other cigars, uh, and I'm going. Um, you come, you come heavy. You don't come at all with these next two. Uh, Bear's number two cigar of the year, the Diesel Esteli Puro. Right. I thought it was gonna be Sunday gravy. By the way, Bear, I really did, but. <laughs> But <laughs> both by the C that just, that just makes me feel I, that makes me feel like unlistened to like in all our conversations now. <laughs> I'm kidding. And then but and it, got, you couldn't even finish that without giggling before you finish saying it. He's a, he's got he's got a horrible tell. <laughs> and then I have a I have the OG uh the warhead one. So Boom. Wow. so have some yeah. of those? Wow. Yeah, so I got I got two real. That's why I'm starting with. That's why I'm starting with Warzone first. Um, plus, I think like I said, this made the list last year. Uh, it was big. It was a big one for you guys, Hector, last year making that list. Yeah, it was. Uh, so, I think. It where was, where it did was, you come in at list? Where did you come? It wasn't top ten. I remember. No, that. It, was, it was. I think it was thirteen. Yeah. I want to say it was thirteen. I think. Listen, it was. It was a great cigar for us. It was. I yeah. mean, it was nice. General. It, it, General got on the list as well because it was a collaboration. Uh, we were, we're very happy with that cigar. We're very happy with it, and it opened a lot of doors for us. And you know, it it, it got us 
you know, people who had never heard of Espinosa or who may have heard it but would never hadn't tried it and may, may have been general fans reached over and, and, and tried it. So that, that helped us, you know? Yeah, I agree. Yep, good good job by you guys. All right, Um, so what are we going to do tonight and how does this work is the big question. So first, I think uh, there were some questions that folks may have in terms of what CA does with, with their list. Um, cigar fish now, and I, here's what we're here's a couple of ground rules which which I just kind of set. The sponsorship discussion is off the table with this show. Okay, so um, we what we do is we look at historical trends, we look at, we look at relationships, and we try to determine who's in and who's out basically. And we go through, and you're gonna see if you haven't seen this show before. There's historical trends, and there's there are companies that just land here and for the most part, they, they take some of those slots and they clinch those slots. And as you have companies that are on it every year, there's a smaller window of companies that are going to be competing for those open slots. And, and as we kind of build this exercise, you'll see that. Um, what CA does is they score stuff throughout the year in their magazine and in their Cigar Insider. And anything that scores a 91 basically is deemed to be eligible into this tournament. Um, they'll typically pick one size per blend. So if they score a couple of sizes, 91 or above, they'll pick one of those sizes and that's what will get in. So they kind of eliminate the you know duplicate duplicity that way. However, um, you know, it's not necessarily the highest one that gets in. And you'll also see if you follow this historically, like it's never the highest. It's almost never the highest scoring cigar of the year that wins number one cigar. Something comes out of this tournament, um, and then they win. Last year it was the EP Carrillo Pledge, and I think what we were shocked at was it was a 92 score going into the tournament, which that certainly can get you in and qualify. What I think shocked everyone last year was when that came out of the tournament. It came in with a 98 rating. It went up six points in a very short window because that was that 92 came very late in the year. And it had, so I had a lot of people scratching their heads. How did that happen? We don't know. We don't know how that happened, to be honest with you. No one knows. I don't know if we'll ever know what happened, but that's what happened. Bear, anything you want to add on to that? Um, no, I think, I mean, I think you covered most of it. The, I think that the, one of the things that we'll, we'll, kind of rehash a few times during this exercise tonight is just talking about, um, you know, talking about, you know, I mean, just, I mean, really well, the style of the tournament that they run and everything like that, it, it does expand because the, the panel actually expands for the, I mean, we've learned this finally in the, in the last year that the, the panel actually expands. So it's actually a little bit different, which accounts for what you were just talking about with the rise of the, uh, the pledge last year going up uh, six points, seven points rather in six weeks. Yeah. Something like um, that. I'm, I think, I think that's six, seven weeks. So, um, so that, that kind of helped a little bit. That was the most perplexing thing. I mean, everyone knows in this, on this panel and the biggest Homer for, for Ernesto stuff. Um, and I did pick the encore and I didn't, I was, you know, I thought the pledge was going to make the list. I just didn't think it was going to be the number one. Cigar. I mean, I was, I was adamant that it wasn't going to be the number one cigar and it was because of the initial score on it. So um, that kind of, that kind of explained the, the rise of it in, in, in short order. Um, but I think that's something to be accounted for. And so uh, throwing out one of my old methods of analyzing this data was looking at cigars that scored well more recently performing better in the list so that throws my fucking theory out the window but that that's all i had to add <laughs> rookie move i couldn't find the mute button there eh? unmute button all right so it's been a, it's been a rough couple weeks man <laughs> yeah a rough couple weeks I'm, I'm like basically lounging at home exactly <laughs> All right. Hey, so what I'm going to do is um, before we kind of get into it, let's just kind of we'll go through a list of companies who we have determined are not going to be a part of the CA list this year. Uh, now, keep in mind, 
the data we we gather this data manually the best we can. Um, and I think last year we were spot on with the data. In some previous years, we have missed a couple of things. But I was proud last year, Bear, that the data we gathered, um, and I know Hector, you were part of that too, that we didn't miss anything last year. Yeah. So so that was a big one, right? Like we didn't like, but I remember a couple of years ago, we missed uh, like a Rocky Patel or something like that. So it, it does happen. The one that made the list. <laughs> the one that made the, the one that made the top 10. Well, because it was reviewed so late in the year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think now that they've offset, it's more of a straight calendar year. It's a little easier to kind of pick this stuff too. So it makes it easier. But what I'm going to do is hopefully folks can see my screen. And if anyone if any, is hopefully something's showing up on that screen. Yep. There we go. All right. These are the companies that I have determined. And I should say 2021. You can see the, uh, we'll do that. So these are the companies that did not qualify for the list because they didn't either have a cigar reviewed or they didn't have a score above. 91, 91 or above. So I'm just going to kind of go through this. If anyone wants to stop me along the way, feel free. But uh, Adventurous, I'm going to read them for folks who are listening to the audio. Uh, Adventura Cigars made a lot of lists this year. Not on there. All Saints, Mickey Pegs, not on there. Made a lot of lists this year. Yeah, yep. number one cigar from yep. Cigar Authority. Yep. Never heard of them. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, come on. Uh Amandola Family Cigars. Um, I know you make some of those, Hector. They're not on the list. No, they're still they're still they're still a little green. They're still young. Yep. The Viva La Vida guys. Uh, nope. Previous winner. Pre- previous top twenty. Previous, yeah, cigar. they were in there last year. They, they last year we, we called that one though. I think too. I think you we all did. called that. One. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Casa Cuevas, who last year did have a cigar in play. They did have a cigar in play, and I, I and I don't think it'll be too long before they. They make the list. Yeah, I agree. Um, Boston Jimmy, number one cigar to you, patrimonial. 100, uh, 100%, 100 score. <laughs> uh, Castagli Cigars, Cavalier Geneva, Crux, Dapper, none. I don't think those have had much even reviewed by Aficionado. Uh, Debonair, who has had stuff for review, they're not in it. Uh, Drunk Chicken Cigars, they're not in it. So, in the next one, I'll just break everyone's heart right now. Steve Saka is not going to be on the list this year. He has never had a cigar review by Cigar Aficionado. And, and you know, it's funny. Every year, Bear, we hear these shows, and they predict Saka on the list every year. When Steve himself will tell you he's never had a cigar review by Aficionado. Right. Now, maybe they'll make an exception for the Paladin to Saka because technically that's <laughs> – that's not a release to go. Um, I think the um, I think the biggest disappointment around that is too. It's just it, it's not the fact that you know obviously that people pick Steve cigars. Cigars. We we were talking about this in the right. green room. Um, Steve makes great stuff. The um, and as Hector pointed out, he can tell a story. Like there's a lot of great things about Steve, but that the disappointing thing is that we say this every year and we talk about this every year, and people just don't understand you have to have a cigar reviewed by them and you have not only reviewed, you have to have a qualifying score. And the fact that he never has a cigar reviewed and yet he, they, people continue and continue to predict that that's the most frustrating part about it. It's like, they don't understand. And it was something I had to learn too, but I mean, you know, after someone said it more than once, I, I, right. I got it. So. so, so bear, can I add to that too, just from a, from a perspective of where I come from as a, what I'll call a general cigar smoker. Uh, to me, it almost makes the the list less legitimate. And I mean that because there's obviously politics that have gone into them never reviewing one of his cigars. And whether you, you like some, you like all, you like one, um, the fact that they haven't reviewed it and they continue not to, to me just speaks to the hypocrisy of the list in, as, as a whole. And I couldn't agree more. Uh, no, I've said that on numerous occasions there. I didn't mean to interrupt here, but yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think it, I, um, it's not just the list, Aaron. It's the fact that they won't publish a story regarding him. Right. Like that, that to me, uh, like that is one of the, my, and listen, I'm a subscriber. It's my, one of my biggest beefs with the, uh, with the publication. hundred percent, hundred percent agree. You know, uh, last year, last year, Soccer Nation kind of started causing a little uproar on this too. If you remember, they, they started getting a little vocal on this thing. 
And Steve actually was the one who kind of calmed him down a bit, saying, hey, look, you know, he didn't want to rock any feathers, it seemed like. But it was very clear that the Saka people who were very passionate about his cigars, you can't – and look, Steve makes great cigars. That's, that's not it. But his people were very passionate about following him. Sure. They, they, they were coming out last year, and, and I think you're going to see it again this year too. So, Listen, but is, it, is the other side of the shoe or the other side of the coin – any different than some of the lifts we've already seen coming in towards, you know, we're in the home stretch now. Consensus is right around the corner. CA list is around the corner. Is it any different than the list that have 15, uh, a best of list with 15 and it has uh, four manufacturers spread across four, about, uh, spread across 15 slots. I mean, it's, you know, obviously, you know, it's, it's different. It's a different storyline, but it's no different. I mean, you know, I, I think you really can't, you, you you can't pick on this list and then not really pick on some of these other lists that'll tell you, hey, I'm a I'm a I'm I am ai am I'm a fanatic of this brand. So I'm going to have six, you know, six of the of my 15 slot six are going to come from this. What, what does that tell me? That tells me that the guy hasn't gotten any free goods, doesn't want to smoke any free, doesn't want to buy pay for cigars or is just stuck in the fact that I love these guys and I'm not going to smoke anything else. Uh, but why? Why would you put on a list? That's, look at the look at the amount. We're at line sixty four already. Uh, JRE is number sixty four in your on your spreadsheet there, correct? Yeah, but this started. It didn't start at one. Uh, All right. So, so let's say, but there's there's a hundred cigar companies. Yeah, I and I picked some of the like I said, I picked some of the um, the bigger ones, I got the ones that people know of. Yeah. So yeah, in fact, there was somebody I didn't mention beforehand, like El Artista, El Septimo, Esteban Carreras. Didn't Esteban Carreras make the list a couple of years ago? No, or he's had, he's had no. Cigars, right? no, and they've they've made they made uh, the cashmere made several lists right last uh, year last year yeah I could have yep. sworn that that uh, that the uh, chupacabra or the uh, Mr Brownstone may have gotten Brownstone for me you may you may be honest something with the chupa but I okay. I don't think they've ever landed they may have had qualifying cigars okay yep uh I mentioned Ezra's Iron Nomad Falto. Ferry Ortego's not on here, and I'm counting Ferry Ortego's all the Nat Sherman stuff too. Well, so well, all the, yeah, so you know they're not on this year. But it's they, a brick but, and um, service there. You got to give them a chance. It's a brick yeah, and service. I agree. I agree. I agree on that. Totally agree on that. Uh, Fratello, fifteen oh two cigars, Hammer and Sickle. HVC wasn't on here, and they've been on the qualifying list a couple of times the last few years, but they weren't on this time. And his time will come too. Agreed. His time will come too. Good cigars. Uh, I, Great, I, young, I agree. Guy, great I agree. young man, you know, his time will come to right, right to right tobacco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. good tobacco, true. I, I agree. Uh, no, Herman Solomon, Jake White, who a lot of us on the Coop team have been very high on. I think their time is going to come as well, uh, but they're not on yet. But I, I do think that this is a company to watch. Yeah, I they're know. young too. It, it, yep. it's, it's coming, I guarantee it's going to be soon. Yep, I agree. But no JRE this year. And JRE's That's been a surprise. On, and, and, and he's on a lot of lists. They're on a lot of lists. And they've been on a top 25. They've made the top 25 before. Uh, no Jeremy Jack. No Kristoff. And kristoff has been on this list a lot. They've been mm-hmm. on several times. So that's a little, a little bit of a surprise. They didn't have anything to qualify this year. Uh, Bear LaBarber is not on here. That's the number one for you. Wow. We all, uh, they keep, they, they can keep missing the mark. Uh, La Galera. A little surprise. They have some pretty good cigars, I think, for the price point. Oh, uh, that's Hochi Blanco. Leaf by Oscar. <coughs> they me. get reviewed. La Galera gets reviewed. They just don't, they haven't they had don't make, they, they don't get the score, yeah. Uh, LH Cigars, Lost and Found, Matilde. Been on the Miami. list before. They've been on the list before, yeah. Miami Cigar has had Nestor Miranda's in there. They're not on this year. Matilde's also had one of the lowest scores in the history of their reviews. I remember. Published reviews. And it was on one of the legacy, like one of the. Um, the Renan Serre, which was Ren- unbelievable because yeah. that cigar's really good. Yeah. It was uh, really. Weird. I agree. No Miami cigar, but the La Aurora stuff is, I think, is in play here. That's separate. Maya Silva, which is one of the biggest cigar companies in Europe, uh, not on the list. Uh, no Mike Bellity and MLB Cigar Ventures. No Mombacho, which Mombacho was getting some love from Aficionado a couple of years ago, if you remember. Remember they were possibly we were looking at the Liga Maestro. Land. Yeah, I thought yeah. the Liga Maestro was going to land uh, well, yeah. a couple of years so, ago. But they're in a reset mode, obviously, too. So, 
you know, it's kind of maybe a little bit like Ferry Ortega right now. Um, no Oscar Valadares, uh, Aaron. And <laughs> but here's the thing: Oscar is actually on the opposite end. A cigar journal does very well. Yeah, he does. So, well, yes, yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. No patina, no PDR. PDR. PDR's been, been on the list. But PDR's been on the list before. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. No platinum Nova. No Postani. No protocol. Sorry, Juan. Sorry, Kevin. Uh, no Decrossier. Sorry, Santana. No Recluse. No Regis. And Regis has been on the list before. So. One time, sure. One time, yep. No Rojas. No Romacraft. They've been on the list. Been on the list. What? They've, They've been, been on the list. list. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think this is the biggest surprise. Room 101. Yeah. They've what is on going on? What? How did that not happen? That's what I'm kind of thinking. And there's, like, I see when you look at relationships with companies, Matt's had a good relationship as far as what we see from the external with, with aficionado. I would think his stuff's getting reviewed and, and there's something that would come in at 91, but that didn't happen apparently this year. He had a bunch of 90s. He had a bunch of um, 90s. Right. Wasn't his stuff wasn't reviewed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, yep. No, I was just going to say he had a bunch of 90s. Uh, but remember, you know, Foundation fell off the list the year after their, their, grand, yeah. their grand ranking too. Yeah. That's another relationship one. Yep. No, it's true. Uh, no Stoyoni cigars. No Tarazona. No Toscano. No United. No Viaje. No Villager. That's a little bit of a surprise. It is. Because Villager, the last few years, has been was on a little bit of a run here until last year. Yeah. So. And and don't forget, uh, don't forget. Oh, you're gonna say Viaje? Yeah, Viaje. Viaje was number two once, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they've had a couple from time to time. They have a cigar that, that comes in at the 91 and, and qualifies. Um, I, I don't think Andre's model works well with aficionado because one thing I think that they do do is when they buy these cigars, they got to be available. So, so, yeah. And then Rockefeller is the last one I had on hand. So those are the companies you are not going to see on this list this year. Um, and uh, if we're wrong, you guys can come back and tell us. But I don't. Did we miss anything else, guys, that you can think of? No. Okay. Very good. So, uh, sorry, guys, um, on that, and uh, we will move on. Um, now, who gets on this list every year is the next question. Uh -huh. All right. So this Hector, I know you. Pick you've me. Pick me. Yeah, <laughs> I know you. I know you've done some work on this uh, analysis. I'm gonna just put up. A, I kind of compiled some of the feedback I got from folks on this and uh, let me go back so i'll pull up um the chart again uh it's not working right i love when when technology doesn't behave and uh right, let's try this now nothing yet suspense is killing me all right i think now we should have it you should see what you saw before. Yep. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Love. So there are companies that we mentioned that every year secure a spot on this list, right? Yes, sir. Some, some companies get more than one. All right. But at a bare minimum, we've seen the following companies lock a spot in here. So what happens is we, the way we kind of do this analysis and Unless there's a special circumstance, which we may see this year, but a couple of companies, this is who we see makes the list every year. And I'll just kind of go down and read them. Ashton, that includes La Roma de Cuba and San Cristobal. Altidus, that includes all the brands under Altidus, Monte Cristo, Romeo, H. Chapman, et cetera. Fuente, that includes all the Fuente brands like Casa Cuba and all that, Rare Pink, et cetera. Alec Bradley, which includes Alec and Bradley. It's not a separate company, right? Right, guys? Yep. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Al yeah, I just want Alec and Bradley is part of Alec Bradley. Let's, I always want to make that clear on this list. Padron, Rocky Patel, General, I'm going to say STG right now. That's General and Fords. My father, Oliva. LFD, and then I have three spots for Habanos because primarily that's what we've seen with this. Yeah, over the years. they like to give their they like yeah. to give their their guys three spots. Now. Right, so there's three, and and 
I say those Habano spots are or wild card spots. Um, it's really kind of tough to pick those. Um, what they're we're gonna go because they review a lot of they review a lot of Habano staff. Um, and then I have what's called some highly probables. These guys make it almost every year. Like so, there's maybe a year like they're on a lot of these lists, but they miss a year from time to time. And I, Tatawai and Illusioni are, are the two that come to mind. Uh, Tatawai, including uh, Latelier and Illusioni. Dion's only missed once, though, in like the last, what, 10 years? Yeah. No, Heck, did he miss twice? Did he miss it? Because we, we were going to Hold move, on a second. Had, let, me, yeah. uh, let me go yeah. back to my data here. So, Illusioni, I have, I, I, my data only goes back eight years because that's how long. Espinosa's been around 10 in February. We didn't have anything our first year, so I started keeping track in 2013. So it's five five cigars in the last eight years. Okay. Maybe he should actually be a strong – we could argue he's a strong wild card. Yeah, well, That's you interesting. Know, well, you've got, well, you've got several. I don't want to – I'll let you go ahead and do your thing. Okay. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, we could, I could argue that one. But I know early on, D- Luzioni was like list after list he was on for a while. All right, so these are the strong wild cards that I would say they, they, they land um, – they have cigars in play, and I put six, and these are subjective. You guys could disagree with these. Drew Estate, Hoya de Nicaragua, Espinosa, uh, Aganor Salif, Foundation, and Placencia. I'd like, to add, I'd like to add to your list Carrillo and Aging Room and AJ I have, Fernandez. I have, Carrillo, I have Carrillo up in the locks. Because now okay. he's got two, yeah. Yeah, so Aging Room, five in the last eight years. AJ, five in the last eight years. And Placencia, four in the last eight years. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Coop, I was going to ask you, so I don't know how we're, we're classifying, but I didn't see AJ anywhere. I, I missed AJ. AJ was missed. I would put AJ as a strong wild card. So, yeah, and with um... – right, again, with all, res- with all respect to uh... – to our friends at Drew Estate, I, I wouldn't even. I mean, it's it's only been recently that they've been making lists. I mean, well, don't I forget mean, Herrera, Herrera's Delhi four in the last eight years as well. Yeah, yeah. Like Drew Estate, okay. I moved from I moved them up from outside shots. Is it four in the last eight? Okay, four in the last okay. eight. So you know, it's kind of like that. Well, maybe not this year for Hoya, but this year for Drew, or this year for Herrera's Delhi. Right, right. And yeah. they have. If you think about it, you're talking about twelve. 11, 11 or 12 in the last eight years, you know, so they're placing, I mean, you know, they're, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, that's really, yeah, that we're four in the last eight. That's, you know, half, half the time. Yeah. That's not really an outside shot. Yeah. So that's, yeah, okay. I would say that's a wild, that good wild card. I guess that's yep. good identified. And this is where I want people to look at the numbers carefully. Right. Cause look, I just kind of, I had Carrillo as, as the 14th because Carrillo now has two number ones. Right. And they're mm-hmm. making a run. Then if we include Tatawai, Luzioni, and then you start to include, and you, let's say we just glump all these together, right? So you got 17 for Drew Estate, 18 for Hoya, 19 for Espinosa, 20 for Aganos. You see how these numbers are going down? Now there's suddenly, look at how many few slots there are left when you start look, factoring in these other ones right yeah, now. Yeah, two, 24 and 25 for outside shots. It, it, that's what this kind of starts to come down to right now. So... It is a very much a numbers game if you look at that. Now, heck, we're going to talk a little tonight because there's one of these locks or one of the two of these locks at the top that could be in trouble this year. And that's where that's where we're going to have some debate tonight. But if we kind of group all these together, the highly probables and the strong wild cards, and let's say they're, they're all one here. Look, look, at, look at how these numbers go down. Even if a couple of these miss, there's, now you got these outsiders in here. And look at the outsiders. I know Ace Prime, Casa Turin, Crown. I, mean, I could just go down this list for the people who are listening. Um, Crown Heads, Davidoff, Saga. Um, Indian shouldn't even be on here. They didn't have a qualifying cigar this year. McAuliffe. Perdomo has a qualifying cigar this year, guys. Perd- first, and, and, first time in It's the first time I can years? remember doing this list. Yes. It's the, uh, it's the 10th anniversary of Maduro. And that's why Perdomo's only on that other list of the companies that we don't have, but they have a cigar this year. So does like, Davidoff. So, so does Davidoff. Dav- so has Davidoff got a couple. I remember I remember early when Davidoff was on the list a lot. I mean, they they they're not on they're not on the list as much as they used to be. 
They they had Nick after Nicaragua last year. They got on with Camacho Nicaragua. Yes. So I'm counting. I'm count, again. I'm going by the company. So Camacho got them on the list last year, and I don't think a lot of us saw that one coming. We knew it was a factor, but I don't think we saw that one coming. Um, Oveja Neher's got a couple of cigars. Casada's got a couple of cigars. Southern Draw, Nat Chico, owned by a company named Xander Gray. So you could see that this is a very, a very competitive list you have here. And, and to get one of those out, like if you're one of these small companies or companies that aren't on the list from time to time, you have a much more difficult time. Now, why do these companies at the top lie there? I'm going to, we're not going to debate that tonight, right? Other than historically, we've seen that there. Okay. Um, you can argue there's a lot about relationships. Those co- like, CA has strong relationships with those 14 companies up here. Uh, well, there's actually, we should say 12, right? <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, that's what you're seeing there. Now, one other thing before we kind of get into some of the analysis here. Um, I just wanted to show one more thing. These are the, what you see here, these are the companies that had more than five cigars eligible for the top 25. Um, and it's, this is almost like Groundhog Day if you look at this every year. It usually looks... These five companies always tend to have the most cigars in play. Um, Habanos always leads the way. Uh, but we're counting every brand in Habanos, right? So we're counting Monte Cristos, we're counting Trinidad, et cetera. Padron typically leads the non Cuban companies, and they do again. And Fuente usually leads the Dominican companies. Uh, Oliva was a little more up this year. Uh, they reviewed a lot of Oliva this year. And then Altidus was the six. Hector, do you remember the year Espinosa was like number two on uh, number two behind Padron or something like that? It was crazy. It was like, uh, two. It was uh, three years ago. Three years ago. It was the year yeah. that uh, that that uh, the Habano was in the top fifteen or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and it was well, no, it wasn't okay. Yes, it was. I was, was saying it was. Then that was four years ago because that was the year that I thought the Habano was going to make it. Yeah. It, it was, was one year where the red just like beat out all the Habanos one year. The red just came out of nowhere. The red came out of nowhere and got it, right? Yeah. 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 So you guys have had some, and a lot of that's due because they've been, and you could probably tell us more, they've invested in reviewing Vitolas in the line. So that's, keep that in mind. Sure. And that's one, and that's a Vitola that they like. Yep. I mean, we did, we did an analysis a couple of years ago when yeah. I think uh, nine out of the first 11 were Bellicosos or Torpedoes. Yeah. That's, that's a Vitola they like. All right. And then just the last thing I'll show, and I promise this is the last data thing. I'm not going to go read every line here. But these are the cigars that scored high. Like, if you're looking at high-scoring cigars, there were about, and there's, I'm not going to read the whole list, there were about 50, almost 46, 46 cigars that had, uh, 45 cigars that had 93 or above. Uh, again, unscientific. The 395s that everyone wants to kind of look at, or the uh, Oliva Siri V, Milanio, Maduro, Churchill, the Padron Family Reserve 50 Natural. I've learned that if they don't say natural, if they don't say Maduro, it's the natural. The natural. Yeah. Oh, is and, that? Did we finally crack the code after I five years found, of doing this? Yeah, Raphael actually told me that. So, Good man. yeah. yeah. And then, you know, because we, we were always confused, like, which one it was. And then the Padron Siri 1926 number 48 Maduro got a 95. So, and there's some there's some odd scores in here. Like I'll just read a couple of random ones. San Cristobal, Quintessence, Churchill got a 94. Yep. The Abanos is Sancho Panza Bellicoso got a 94. Uh, so and then you know so I mean those were some other oddball ones. And the Cruzado Robusto by Luzioni got a 94. And again we. Cruzado's one of those lines that kind of gets forgotten about with Luzioni a lot. You know there's there's one Cuban. They have a lot of Habanos, obviously, but there's one that's made the list three times in the last which, eight years. Which one? The Bolivar Bolicoso Fino. Yeah. Three times that cigar has been in the top 25. Oh, wow. Three. They love three that they like that's, a, that's, a, that's an outstanding Cuban cigar. So that, that, I understand. It, it, it is. I, I it, wouldn't know. But, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you that that's uh, – that's, uh, and the, the other one is Cohiba Siglo 6 Tubo. Everybody else is in the last eight years is one, one, you know, one, one placement. That's placed three times and the Cohiba twice. And what I've noticed is the oddball Cuban cigars tend to not get the rating. 
Yeah. Right. So I would not, if I was going to Vegas and I was betting on San, I would not place a bet on Sancho Panza making this list. Yeah. But we Those had are, this conversation last year. Remember with Juan Lopez, right? Juan Lopez got that really high rating and then, and then it landed on the list. Yeah. But it didn't land high. It didn't land in the top no, 10. No, no, it didn't. I mean, listen, they got three. They got to put one in the top 10, one in the middle, and one towards the bottom of the yep. back. Yeah. That's pretty much how it works out all the time. Yeah, sometimes they put two in the top 10. You got to watch that. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's been how long has it been since the Cuban won number one? 2013. Right. That's, yeah, that's going to be our question. Tonight. Hector's bringing out, the, Hector's bringing out the, uh, the elephant in the room early with that one. Well, yep. I mean, you know, listen. That's a I, fair point. I love doing this because this reminds me of being at work, you know, uh, looking yeah. at, you know, looking at trends and analysis. I love this crap. So this is fantastic. All right. So let me see if we just covered all the, all the BS right now. Uh, get to some of the, so, okay. Yes, we've done that. All right. So let's, one other thing I just want to mention um, trend wise, and we look for trends with this thing. Okay. We look at companies that have, we, we've talked about the historical context. We've talked a lot about paying your dues to get on the list. I know Hector, you know, a lot of people look at Espinosa as, hey, you guys have had several top 25s. What, now have you paid enough dues to get to the top 10? You know, so those are valid questions that people ask right now. I've talked a lot about, I tend to see the companies that have those lock spots are also all the companies that do exclusive media releases with CA. So I think more of that as opposed to advertising. I look at the, the relationship piece is strong with that. Um, and then the other thing is, remember last year that, we were talking about these Connecticut's like, and there were two Connecticut's in the top 10. Where are the Connecticut's right. this year? I didn't see the Connecticut's this year, Barry. Did you? No. Yeah. That was something that, uh, I mean, the, I mean, the two biggest things that you've been pretty emphatic on as long as we've done these, the, the, you, you always, you always get on me when I pick uh, like the Corona or the Lancero to land on my, and predict on my list or and the Connecticut's and, and, you know, I, I try to, I try to, you know, I, I, I try to analyze this as honestly as possible and understanding those trends and stuff like that. But, you know, in the last year, you know, last year, there was just too many. I just felt there was too many strong Connecticut's on there that they weren't and um, that they weren't going to make it. Sure enough, they, a couple of them landed. Um, but, um, yeah, this year, yeah, it just it just goes to the back. It, it goes back. I'm not trying to pull uh, pull out my uh, my winning hand a little too early here. But, I mean, it just goes to show that this year looks it looks a little like they're kind of reverting back to some of these old trends of years past it's not going to be i don't you know it's i have like a couple that, of I agree, later, I, but there's not as many surprises i think I, I agree with you on that um and we talked a lot about the expanded panel and stuff too i thought it would carry over but i didn't see it carry over into this year like i would be surprised if we see a connecticut on me on this list this year i have one connecticut on the list okay we'll i have one it. on my list Okay. Huh? Well, no, we get to it. I mean, we have. I have one Connecticut. Uh, I have a Corona Gorda. I, I remember last year there was an actual straight Corona, if I'm not mistaken. Wasn't there a well, straight Corona on the list last year? A uh, five by yeah. four. Yeah, there was. There was a Corona. I mean, they they mm -hmm. they do throw you a curveball every once in a while. Yeah. But, you yeah, know, it was the, gay, and, it was the gatekeeper. And yeah, and then we talked about the resurgence of the Churchill. There were several Churchills in the in the list. So, you know. Yep. No, it's true. All right. So let's get to this bulk. This is where we're going to have a lot more interaction with the panel here. Um, and I'll guide folks through some of this, too. So, you know, if you don't remember something, don't worry. These are what we call the bubble companies we're going to go through, right? Some of these are companies that are on that wild card or on the outside looking in. And some of these are established companies that didn't have a lot of stuff reviewed this year. And I'm going to cover those towards the end. And there's some interesting companies that made, like, on that, like, there's only a couple of companies on there that are in that top 14 that are shockers, and they have like one shot, I think, to get it, get one or two shots. So, but let's start off with um, the first company is, and I just want everyone's opinion on this one. I know what Bears is going to be on this. Um, Ace Prime. They have three cigars in play: the the Pachardo Classico, the Pachardo Reserve of Familia, Connecticut, and Luciano the Dreamer. Do you guys Ace Prime? Did they land on this list this year? You you called me out. Do you want me to go first? I want you to go first because you and I discuss. You and I know I've discussed this this company before. Well, uh, I was talking to Ben when you were kind of getting set up uh, in the green room earlier, and I, I you know I I know we've kind of talked privately about this, and I, I mentioned this to Aaron earlier this week too. Like I'm I, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna I I feel like I've just been overthinking it uh, lately, uh, and so I've kind of just been able to go back and 
analyze everything and, and I, you know, go comb through the information that I've been able to get and figure, try to figure something out. Um, I'm not wavering on this. Ace Prime's making this list this year. Um, I initially, you know, in conversations out uh, off air, we had talked about this and I initially had them pretty high. Uh, I'm backing off of that early prediction. Um, I don't think they're, like I said, I think they're, the list is going to revert back to older trends. Um, and we're not going to see as many kind of surprise. We'll see some surprises, I think, but uh, Ace Prime won't be in the, it won't, it won't be very high this year, but they, I, yes, they, they're going to make the top 25 list this year. hundred percent. Okay. Uh, we'll go to Bull Shark, Ben. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. As a matter of fact, I, I like the Connecticut is one of my favorite cigars on the market right now. I love them, but I love my Connecticut shade cigars. And I, I honestly think that probably, I mean, that or the Classico to me, I think I'll make it. The Dreamer, just because of its size, I don't think I'll make it. Even though I think it's a fine cigar. But I, yeah, I think the Connecticut, I think that's the one that will make it out of the three, in my opinion. Interesting. Aaron. Yeah, so I, I agree. I So I did my not-so-scientific top 25, and I actually have the Classico on there. Uh, to, to Bear's point, I don't have it all that high. And then to Ben's point, the one that's not going to make the list, if I were to go to Vegas, I'm going to say the Dreamer. I mean, just based on the size and just the base, the way they've gone in the past, I don't think the Dreamer makes it. But I just think having three cigars – fairly highly rated, what they look for. I, I put the Classico um, on my list. Uh, I love that because it's the best out of the three cigars, but I agree with you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That's not the gonna, that's not gonna be the one that makes it, but. Yeah. No? Yeah, it's, I think it's the best, I mean, personally, we're, but our personal tastes don't really factor into this yeah. analysis too much. Uh, I think I think the Dreamer is the best cigar out of the three, and and but it's it's not going to be that one, but it will it will be one of the other two. Hector, I have uh, I have the Pachardo Classic Natural on the list. I have it on my list. So there's always got to be one dissenting vote. Sorry, Luciano, you missed the list this year. Um, oh, no, I, look, and I, I, like I think I think, Luciano's a, I think Luciano's a year away because I think when those those Dreamer line extensions come out. Uh, the Fiat Luxes. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot more looking into the portfolio. It's a numbers game, and I think Luciano is going to miss that one this year. And that is not a reflection of what I think of Luciano or anything. This is I'm putting myself in the mind of an aficionado, and I hope Luciano calls me up uh, in a week and tells me I'm wrong. Because I, so I think that's, he, you I think, can, you, I think, you that, I think that. that, I think those are three, I think those are great cigars that he's got. You on. can say that for anything. And, and all of the next, yeah, all yeah, the things yeah. we're going to talk about in the next hour, none of them are reflections on these companies. We're, we're, we're friends of these, you know, yeah, we're we are, we are absolutely. So, and, and the best thing is when I said Raphael let me have a second cigar in the top 10 and he gets number one, he can laugh about this with me forever right now, which is really cool. So, so it's, it's kind of cool, but I'm just playing the numbers. When I played the numbers game, it came out a little short. Um, two of them were Connecticut, uh, and, and, and Lancero obviously were, were why I kind of looked at that. Well, if I, if I'm wrong this year, uh, Pete, Pete Johnson can, uh, can get off my back. Cause he, I've, I've, he said I've, I've jinxed the last couple of years. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move to the next one. This is an easy one. There's only one cigar on here. Uh, the Agonorsa Leaf Supreme Leaf Torpedo, uh, gets a 91. Uh, we'll go reverse this time. Hector. Agonorsa Leaf, do they make the list with this cigar? They, I have them right. I've, I've got them right there, but I I just don't think they make it this year. I, I mean, agree. Again, no reflection on the company or them. It's just I don't think I don't think they make the cut this year. They got the size, but I they, don't think Yeah, they, they do have the size. The torpedoes the size. I, I just don't yeah. know if they if – they, and what, what did it come in at, a 91 or a 92? 90, 91, so it's kind of like 90, just getting into the tournament. Yeah, yeah, it's getting right into the tournament there. And 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 listen, if, if you're only going to do a certain number of torpedoes, there are a lot of really highly rated torpedoes. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just think it. I think it's I think it's truly a numbers game there. Yep, that's what I think. Well, Aaron? I, All right. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Bear, I'm sorry. Are you going to say something? No, 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 no. I, I, I need to wait my turn. Excuse me. Yeah, my no, apologies. So... I'm going to go, I'm going to say they make the list. I, I did my top 25 and I have them on that, that cusp of making again, not super high. Um, 
but I went with kind of what Hector talked about. And I went because of the size of the torpedo and Agronosa making the list, um, you know, in the past, I, I, I put them in. Okay. It's a good size. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree with your logic on that, I should say. Uh, ben, Bull Shark, Agonorsa, I know you really like this cigar. Yeah, I do. I actually think this, to me, it's the best out of the whole, all the iterations of this line, of the Supreme Leaf. But I don't think it makes it. I really don't. There's too many other stronger contenders that I think will be above it. Okay. Bear? Uh, it's interesting hearing Hector's reaction, the the, the hesitancy there. Um, I had the same thing as I was putting my top 25 list, and it was the one that I actually agonized the most over. This was a, um, this was a true bubble cigar, I this, felt. Yeah, this was, I mean, this was about the biggest, the biggest bubble one on. And it like, um, I, you know, since Terrence has come over to Aganor Salif, uh, you know, it's, you know, his presence and his relationship has been been felt on this list. You can tell. I mean, you know, with their with the guardian of the farm landing that first year as far to that company and everything, and then, um, and uh, and in you know subsequent years with other cigars and everything. But if you remember that second year coup, the the JFR that made that list, yeah, was really highly rated. But it was one of only I think one of only two agonorsely cigars that year so it's not like they haven't beaten the odds before but i think like i, I think you can only beat the odds so many times before you know i, I just I, I i i have it off my list and it was but it was truly the I, it was the one i agonized over the most like truly uh, but it's off it's off my list and that's un, it's unfortunate because i agree with ben too per, again personal taste not mattering but yeah. we'll still we'll still insert it throughout tonight uh, but i you know that was the that was the one that I, out of all the Supreme Leafs, that I enjoyed the most, too. Okay. Uh, so I'm breaking the tie here? No, no uh, tie. I'm, I'm the lone wolf here that's going to say it's on the list. <laughs> wait, wait. Hector, you said no? Hector, I said, unfortunately, I don't think it does. Okay, I'm sorry. Then, I, yeah, unfortunately, uh, I'm the lone dissenter here. Uh, I'm not lone dissenter. I'm, the, I'm also on the no camp. Uh, again, it was, Bear, your logic was exactly what I said. Uh with that it, it just you know again it was a true bubble cigar it was a numbers game um but i'd say this is a t it wouldn't surprise me if it's on there either but i think it's a Listen, one. i, I want to be wrong because there's certain there's some on the list that i put on the list that i don't think belong on the list but they're, yeah. they're going to be on the list in my opinion yeah and I, it, yep. that surely belongs and listen you talk to retailers that's a that's a cigar they covet so it's uh you know it's it's a good cigar All right, the next one. This is, I think, going to be, it's one cigar. Um, and I think this is going to be pretty, we'll see how this goes. But uh, Black Label Trading Company. Um, I always want to double check that I have one on there. Yeah, one one cigar, Black Label Trading Company. It is the Last Rites Viaticom Toro. Got a 91. All right, Bear, we'll kind of go easy. We'll go back, back and we'll kind of go that serpentine here <coughs> well i think uh, black yeah go ahead finish I up didn't, here. yeah no um go go ahead yeah wait, well, what's that? I, I was just gonna say i i mean i picked i picked the black label a couple of years ago when they had a bunch of cigars that were rated and qualified and highly rated cigars too and i thought that was the year that they were gonna break in i think james uh and the oveja negra team are gonna break on this list uh you know very soon um i don't think they do it with this cigar um, you know, I, the, it's, it's clear that overall and historically that the, that the tasting panel do like the blending style of James and their scores do their cigars do score pretty well. So I think, I think, I think it will be an eventual, and it, we could see it as early as next year. It just won't be this year with this cigar. Um, this, the, I look at the, the blend specifically on this one, that it's not something, it's not a blend that, ter you know, with tobaccos that tend to do well. I, I went, like I said, I went deep on the analysis with this one. It, it, you know, that, the yep. numbers, everything, the low score. The, uh, the other thing to consider on, on this one in particular was uh, the fact that, I mean, it, it's a recent score too. Again, I'm making the same fucking mistake I made last year. I'm gonna, you know, so, I, you know, it was a November 9th rating so we'll 
I just don't think it, it climbs high enough. It, it, the bigger panel and everything, but I just don't think it's the cigar, you know, you know, looking back at looking back at the trends and stuff. So unfortunately. Okay. Yep. That, that mean. Ben, Black Label Trading Company make it? Uh, I love this cigar. I mean, the, the Viaticum was one of my favorites that, uh, that I've had this year, to be honest. But I don't think it makes it. I really don't. I'm with Bear for the same reasons. I just don't think it makes it. Aaron? Yep. I'm going to agree with both uh, Bear and Ben. I love the cigar. It's probably my second favorite out of that with uh, the Bishop's Blend being my favorite of that that coming out of from James Brown. But uh, I just think from a numbers to size, just everything that that I look for and what they kind of how they score, what they look for, the tobacco, et cetera. I don't have it making uh, my top 25 or, or I should say their top 25. Right. And Hector. I have it in my top 25. Uh, wow. Look, they, oh, wow. They, and I'll tell you why they've they've kind of taken a turn more to the, you know they've they've been a little more they've embraced the boutiques a little more in the last couple of years, and uh, you know Blackworks is as boutique as you can get I think and they they've got you know I it's you know they're they're one of five or six companies like that that are very you know very cool very edgy, and don't think for a minute that might not have some influence as well I think that. You know, we always talk about that one cigar that, you know, the, what, what do we call it? One night coop, the, who's this year sublime. And I yeah. think, uh, and I think it's, it'll be them and, and, and with legs. So I, I'm, I've got them, I've got them in my top 25. You think they make up for the sins of the past with all those, uh, those highly rated cigars that didn't make it? Well, listen, that's, that's the, uh, we, we, you can't make up for sins of the past because you'll never. You know what? That's not true because they, you know, we know that CA does revisit cigars, and maybe one day they'll revisit some of those higher, those higher rated cigars that they had before. But I think this is just, you know, it's it's been a it's been a wild couple of years, and and I don't see it's I don't to me it's a why not? That's a that's my that's that was my pick. Why not? I hope I'm wrong on this, but I really do because I think it deserves. It. I really, but man, it's a good cigar. We're really. Good cigar. I I went no in exactly why Bear went no when I looked at some of the tobaccos in this cigar. Not that it's a, it looks, this is a great cigar. We I think we're all in agreement and smoked it. Um, the problem that I had with this one was um, Ecuador and Maduro is not something they normally gravitate to. Um, and I think again they're on the cusp. They're gonna you're gonna see in the next couple of years this company land on the top 25. I don't think it's gonna be with this cigar though. Um, somehow I think eventually we're going to see it with like Bishop's blend or something down the line. Um, but, but I'm going to, I'm going to go, no, but I kind of, I kind of hear all the feet. I, Hector, I hear a lot of what you're saying too. If there was a candidate for this year's sublime, it could be this one, but I'm, I'm just going to put my betting money here and say, no. Okay. All right. Um, this one, I, if you looked at the notes, I added this one to the list, but I think it's an important one to add. Um, and that is, uh, the aging room, uh, that is the aging room of uh, uh, Nicaragua, Cuatro Nicaragua. Um, got a 91 as well from Boutique Blends. I'm going to start this one off, and then I'll go to Hector. I have this one making the list. Um, it's another size that they're putting on here that I think they want to kind of showcase that the aging room two years ago was not a one-hit wonder with that Nicaragua getting number one. And I think this one finds its way on the list, and I'm going to put a yes for this one for that reason. So Hector, I'll go to you right now. I I I'm I'm I've got it on my list. Okay. <laughs> it it'll it'll be in the top twenty five. Yeah, I think we yeah. I think yeah. Yeah, we're, Even we're only on one the, from this. You are, I think we're on the same wavelength with that one. Yeah, it's it, it's going to be in the top twenty five. Yep. Um, and it's a Figurado. That's another thing to keep in mind. So it checks the box with the Figurado. It well. checks the boxes. It checks uh, it checks a lot of boxes. Yeah, it's it checks normal. a lot of boxes. This one, yes. Yes. Uh, but that I think those those two things that I said are, are the key thing. All right, Aaron. Yep, I'm gonna agree with you guys. I had it on my <clears throat> my list as well. Um, you know, look, I, I, I when when a, when a cigar goes number one and then it makes an appearance back onto the top twenty five again in a you know you know different size. 
sometimes I kind of question it a little bit. It's like, you know, it's not, it's not like it's not legitimate, but I just kind of, I guess, smirk a little bit, but based on size, based on what you guys outlined, I did have it making uh, my top 25. All right, Ben. Yeah, I, def- I think it makes it too. I, a matter of fact, I think it's the low 20s, high teens is where I think it'll that, probably it, land. That's where I'm seeing it. Like 19 wouldn't surprise yeah, me. Like, like, yeah. yeah, 21 to 18 in that somewhere in there, I think. I think yep. it makes it no problem. Yeah, yep. it's a good start. It is a good. I have not smoked the impromptu. I'm going to be completely honest. I have not smoked the Figurato in this. It's one I do want to smoke. But yeah, like I said, I think it's a good cigar. I had it. I had aging room. I'm, the year it got number one, it was number 20 on my list. So, um, so I do like, and Ben and Bear and I, we remember we were at the trade show bear in 2018 and we both fell in love with this cigar. At, yeah. when we, were, we were smoking this and we, we knew it was really good. So bear, I'm, I'm guessing this could be a unanimous one unless I'm wrong here. It's interesting what, uh, what Aaron was saying a minute ago about a cigar landing number one and then making, making a qualifying cigar years later, you know, it was kind of my, one of my biggest conundrums was how you know the my father uh libisha 1922 box press goes yeah. from number five to number one years later yeah yep. it's kind of reverse um and we're going to be talking about another cigar being a one and then have a qualifying cigar too here in just a little bit but um with this one in particular i it's funny i chuckled when you said when you said your number coup because that's exactly where i have it on my list i have it at 19 it's going to be number the number 19 cigar i've got it locked in wow i've got it i've got it at 17. Okay. i have it at 20. so we're kind of all in the same boat with that that is a unanimous one we all have but it cracks so, the top 15 hectares like price is right baby <laughs> <laughs> all right <coughs> moving down crown heads has two entries both at 91s the mil diaz edmundo and Corona Gorda. Bear, we'll start this one off with you. So this is this is this is the interesting uh, this is the interesting uh, you know monkey wrench that gets thrown in, right? Because we were talking about Luciano <laughs> and Eduardo Pichardo making it with Ace Prime. Do they make? Do they put two cigars? Do they get two cigars in the top twenty-five list? Um, that's that's an interesting that's an interesting take. Even though this is a crowned head cigar do you know do the manufacturers make it well we saw how we had you know ernesto perez Carrillo jr had several cigars in the top 25 last year aj fernandez had several cigars in the top 25 last year um so i mean it's it's doable and it can be done um i this was uh i mean apart from the agonorsa leaf uh being excruciating to analyze and try to figure it out and everything I, this one was a, was difficult as well um, but I, I also have this making the list, but I have it somewhere in the bottom of the, the bottom of the list. Um, but I have I have crown heads making the top 25. Specifically, if we're going to go if we're if we're going specific, I think it's going to be the Edmundo. OK. Yep. Uh, uh, ben? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. The Mil Diaz Edmundo, I smoked boxes of those this year. I love that cigar. But I mean, obviously, we're not talking about our taste and what we like. I I do think this makes it, and I I think it's in the high teens is where it will land too. It's a fantastic cigar. The Corona Gord is great too, but I just think the Edmundo takes it. It's it's fantastic, and you know I think it's going to be somewhere on the same place Aging Room is, in my personal opinion. And so, what all this panel is going to split our difference here, Ben? We we disagree on where it's going to place, but. Mm-hmm. Okay, Aaron. Yeah, all right. So I struggled with this one. So we've all had this conversation. I know Ben and I have had this conversation because the Amundo, I have boxes. Uh, I actually talked to John Huber. He texted me and he goes, Have you tried the new <clears throat> Mil Diaz? And this goes back when it came out. I said, Well, if you consider buying seven boxes, trying, um, yes, I have. So <clears throat> here's the here's what I, my conundrum, conundrum was. If we're up to me, it'd be like freaking top 10. I, I just absolutely love that cigar. Where do I think? I think it does make the list. Um, unfor- Look, it doesn't really matter where it's ranked. I think it's going to be lower than I would put it, but I do have it making the list and specifically that Mundo size. <coughs> All 
All right, Hector. Sadly, I don't have it on the list. It's a oh, number. Oh, I thought game. this was the Corona Gorda you picked. Oh man, I I got I got to swear you're gonna you're gonna. It's uh, it's with not it. it's on. Sadly, it's not on the list because it's just not only the numbers game; it's a name game. You know, very few companies can pull an Ashton and have two lists, two name, two you know, two cigars on the same list. You know, and and while Ace Prime and Tichardo <laughs> and them are three different companies, they're at times viewed as the same thing. They're all you know, they're kind of viewed as one. So I think that uh, if he, he if Tichardo makes it as I as I've guessed, you know, as I've guesstimated that Tichardo will make it, I don't. I think it'll be at Crown Heads' expense. Plus, don't forget, Crown Heads made it last year. So you know, I think it's 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 one of those rota- rotational things. Uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Will. I'll, I'll, I'll skip a comment after that. Okay, I was gonna say. Um, so I agree with Hector's analysis about the numbers game, but I didn't have Ace Prime on there. Um, I do have Mil Diaz on there. Now Mitchell made a good point in the chat room. He says that he doesn't think CA takes factory into consideration as heavily, and I I agree. However, I think there still is something with the relationship with Luciano, and I can't see like I, I just don't think the Ace Prime ones make it. But I think that Mil Diaz and Mundo checks a good box with CA, and um, in this case, he'll get something out of that factory this year, and it will be good for Luciano um, moving forward. Listen, like I said, I want to be wrong, especially when it's somebody that I know and I like. I want to be wrong. And it's a cigar that, listen, I smoked a bunch of them. Jack smoked a bunch of them because Jack's in my office six hours a day. So, <laughs> and, and he loves that cigar. And usually when he raves about a cigar, I will try it. But in this case, that wasn't, that wasn't necessary. Miguel is a good friend of ours. Yep. But I just think it's one of those situations where, you know, they made it last year. Richardo has a cigar this year. I know they're not the same companies, but I just think they, they kind of, you run out of, you just, you ran out of chairs when the music stopped. No? Yeah. Yep. No, it's, it's fair. Great point. Well, well what, I was gonna, what I was going to say was, I, I understand what you're saying about having, you know, the same kind of factory on there twice. And, it, but still, if I had to pick between a, one of the Pichardos or Bill Diaz, I personally think the Maldias makes it out of the out of the two, honestly. Yeah, but you understand that sometimes, you know, bringing uh, – if Pichardo makes the list, will it be his first time on the list, Coop? Yes, right? Yeah. It will be his first time on the list. And they yeah. like that. Yeah. They, that's, 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 good, I, that's good equity. That's good no. cigar. That's good equ- good brand equity. You know, it, you it, made the it, list. It, and it strengthens the whole – like what they did, Crown Heads and Ace Prime together, that partnership, which is a very good partnership, it seems to be working very well. Um, and it's, I, you know, I think that partnership's just beginning, you know, it's two years in and it's going well. And I think these companies will be working together for a long time. I, I, I really, I picked up the body language, at least from the booth and it seemed like a very positive relationship. These companies have. Yeah. The, these two, I mean, honestly, they all deserve to be on the list. Problem is there's only so many slots, right? So some, something has to be left off. I don't know. I, I just feel like the Mil Diaz is a little bit stronger out of the two. But it That's wouldn't surprise me, honestly, if one of the Pichardo makes it instead. They're 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 all fantastic, yep. you know. Yeah. But yeah, I I agree. But listen, also, I, and you know, and like I said, I'm not a salesman, but I know the I can I can see the sales component now. If one of them makes it, all of them made it. You know, yep. it's good for it's good for the it's good for the triumphant if one of them makes it. Yep. You know? Yeah, I agree, hundred percent with that. Yep. All right, let's jump ahead to Davidoff. Uh, two cigars on there, both 91 rated. Uh, you have the Zeno Platinum Crown Series 2020, Grand Robusto, and the Davidoff Signature Number 2. Hector, does Davidoff make the list a second year in a row? Uh, yeah, and I think it's going to make it under its own banner. <laughs> I think it's going to make it as a, as a Davidoff. I have the Signature Number 2 at the, at the the next to the bottom of my list. Okay. And it's, and it's been a while. Camacho made it last year, and... And this is a very eclectic list. I put together some old school stuff and, and some new yeah. stuff. Yeah. I, I think I think they make it. Aaron, does Davidoff make it? So I don't have them on my list. I, I didn't. It, it was one that was kind of on the borderline for me that, you know, is it, it makes all the sense in the world for them to make the list again. Um I don't know. I guess something to I think somebody made the comment just not enough room. It's probably going to make the list. It, I didn't put it on there, but um, I, I'm just going to say no, just because I ran out of room of, of where I was slotting everything. But uh, 
it happens. <laughs> yeah. So I, I said no. Okay. I know. Uh, ben. Well. Well, you, you got me. You caught me in mid light here. <laughs> um, actually, for politics reasons, I think I think it makes it, and I think I'm with Hector. I think the signature number two makes it. And it's the right, and it's it's it checks off a huge box. So number exactly. two. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. I think it, I think that cigar makes it. I really do. Bear. Um, I. Well, personally, again, personal taste not coming factoring in, but factoring in into the point of discussion. Like I couldn't believe the Camacho Nicaraguan made it <laughs> last year. I had it off. Um. Uh, but it, you know, it ended up, it ended up making one and a nice feather in the cap for the, you know, our friends over at Davidoff and everything, but number that with, with these two in particular, I it just, I, I'm, I'm actually really, I'm actually really surprised that, that, that Hector and Ben had it. Um, um, I mean, but Hector's reputation, notwithstanding on guessing these top 25, I should probably change my answer here, but um, but no, I had it off my list. Um, I had David off, off my list this year. I just didn't think that either one was, you know, the scores were high enough. I didn't think, you know, historically that the doubt off banner just hasn't done well. Um, I thought more, you know, if out of the two, I thought the Zeno may potentially have a, ch a better chance just because it's the, it's the Zeno, it's the Zeno Nicaraguan. They love Nicaraguan tobacco. So um, oh no, it's the no. I'm sorry, it's the Crown Series. My apologies. I was thinking about the the Nick Rose, so, but my apologies on that. Um, but uh, no, I, I I just I just didn't see either one of them making the list. So I had a no as well for that one. Uh, numbers game. And Davidoff just hasn't particularly. I mean, Camacho Nicaragua came a little bit out of left field, but again, I look at and that one completely because it wasn't that really wasn't even a Nicaraguan cigar. That come out to Nicaragua, but I just don't see either one of these making making the list. Um, I just think it's a numbers game, so I have them out. Yeah, I, I'll have to say it's out of all the ones we've been discussing right now, it's the weakest by far. Yeah, but I still think I, I do think the you know something you know like the signature will make it. It just, ha it just kind of has to, you know. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Aaron, you had Aaron, you had a no on this one, right? I did. Yep, yep. So it, we're split on this one. This is, this is a, a divide. All right, so I know Joe Groh has been waiting for this next one. Uh, so let's kind of get to this one right now. Drew Estate. Um, three cigars on there. An Undercrown Sungrown Bellicoso. A head, Herrera S3 uh, Abano Lonsdale. Both of those at 93. And the Undercrown 10 Corona Doble comes in late at the 91. Uh, let's start with... Uh, Let's start with you, Bear. Does Drew Estate make the list? This is a Drew Estate year. I have Drew Estate making this uh, this list this year. Um, uh, while Herrera Estelite performs pretty well, um, as, as Hector alluded to earlier, uh, I, I don't have the hope. And, and I love the Lonsdale Deluxe Savano. I fucking love that cigar. So I smoked uh, well, a lot of those. <laughs> yeah, they're fantastic. Uh, and I totally agree with that 93 rating on it, too. That's uh one of the one of the one of the few times i agree with cigar aficionados rating on something but uh, I, I love that cigar um but it's not the rare ls lee this year i i'm um i'm going one of their size preferences um the bellicoso i think the underground sun grown bellicoso I, it, it's yep they're not typically big sumatran people um but i think the underground sun grown bellicoso makes it this year and um, although and I'm totally, I mean, they have another great size that, you know, the Corona Doble's Churchill's perform well historically. Um, so, I mean, it, it very well could be the 10, um, but with the lower rating in December, again, I'm shooting myself in the foot by saying this, I just, I just don't know if it has enough gas to, to get it over the finish line, but I've smoked a number of the Sun Grown Bellicosas. It's a really consistent performing cigar. That's what they look for is consistency. Um, and they love that size. And so I think, you know, I think it's going to be the Sun Crumb Bellicoso. And I think Drew Estate makes the list this year. Ben? Yeah, I definitely think they make the list. I, I'm really torn on whether it's the Herrera SLE or the UC10. Um, 
kind of what how what Bear was saying about the UC ten. It was late, kind of a bit lower score. It's a great size for this list. It really is. Um, I I think it's the UC ten. I think it, I think the UC ten makes it. Okay, Aaron. Yep. So I have um, in kind of following Bears lead i have the undercrown sun-grown bellicoso number 16 on my list so i think it look checks the boxes you know and one thing that i i learned over time or or heard you know they smoke what half the cigar the first third or half of it when they when they rake it i don't know if that's that's true or not but um i think that that size and, and when i smoked it i could see where it got the rating it did, and I, I do think Drew Estate makes makes the list, and I have it at sixteen for that Undercrown Bellicoso. Okay, Hector. I have it as well. I have it in, and uh, it, it marks it checks the box for me. Uh, first of all, it's the year; it's Drew Estate's year. They've, they've really they what they've done this year promoting and marketing, uh, and and getting you know the the Undercrown Ten. In, in so many hands and getting all the great reviews. Uh, I have the Corona Doble because it, it checks the big old cigar bar. There's always a couple of big old cigars in there. And I think that's, uh, for me, that's going to be the one. I've got it in the, I've got it on my list, Undercrown 10 Corona Doble. Last year, Aristoli was very good, but Aristoli was on last year. So I think uh, it's, uh, it's uh, they passed the baton this year. They, you know, they're switching spots. All right. Um... I loved all three of these cigars. In fact, all three of these blends have landed on the coupe list at one time or another. Um, but I'm going to be the descending vote again <laughs> and say no. Um, so this is not an indication what I think of, of the, the blends. Um, I, ju- I don't see that Lonsdale getting on here. I, I just don't. I, I don't know if Undercrown 10 had enough uh, juice to kind of get it over the finish line, as Bear said. And... I don't know. Again, Bear, you mentioned the point about Sumatra wrapper, and, and you know, I just, I don't. Again, it's a numbers game here, so I'm gonna say no on this one. Uh, again, I hope I'm wrong. These are three. These are three cigars that have landed on a coupe list at one time or another. So, uh, you know, they've done. They've performed very well for me. So, yeah, that's kind of the same. The same way I was thinking, like the Sumatra. They don't. They don't usually don't. Yeah. You know, put those on the list, right? Unless they Ernie use, makes it. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. true. <laughs> but, the, you know, the UC ticket was so late, you know, but it was such a huge push, and it did it did pretty well, pretty much everybody that reviewed it. And then, you know, and like, you know, Hector said, the Herrera SLE was on last year. I just don't think they double up again. So, to me, out of all of them, UC 10 has got the strongest. I mean, just because, like what Hector and I both said, it checks the, the box for, for the size putting that size on that list but we'll see i don't know yep interesting so let's move over to uh their their sibling hoya to nicaragua um and by the way i'm skipping a couple guys just for time's sake but if there's something you want me to go back and cover let me know um so let's go hoya to nicaragua has two cigars at 92 they have the antonio 1970 grand console and the hoya silver robusto uh, let's start off with you, Hector. Does Hoya to Nicaragua make this list? It does. It's going to be a top 15. Uh, Hoya's, been, Hoya's been fire uh, the last few years with the list. And I see the Silver Robusto uh, on the on the list at uh, above 15. Oh, wow. Because it marks the Robusto box, too. Yep. A lot of Robustos in there last year. A lot list. of Robustos last year, yeah. Um, Aaron. Yep. I have it as well, um, but I don't have that cigar. I actually went with the Antonio 1970 Grand Consul. Um, I don't know. I, so <clears throat> I think Hector makes a good point. The Robusto, <laughs> look, out of personal preference, I mean, the Silver's, I mean, it's not a bad cigar. It's just, I didn't think, to me, I, I thought the the Hoya, the um, the 19, the, uh, I'm sorry, the 1970 was a better cigar. So maybe I was a little influenced by my own palate, but uh, I went with the 1970 over the the silver, but I do have them making the list. 
Ben? Oh, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking with Aaron. I, the Grand Console, I've smoked over the years. A, a godly amount of those cigars. And it's a fantastic cigar. The silver, to me, is okay. I like it. I, you know, it's not something I seek out, but I, I don't. I don't think they make the list this year. Personal opinion, but we'll see. Okay. Interesting. Um, Bear, I think I know what you you're gonna say on this one. Um, I'm. I know we've been talking about how personal preference hasn't been creeping in on this and stuff like that, but I I want some. I want some fucking justice out of this. The Hoya Silver was uh, yeah. Robusta was my 2018 number two cigar of the year. I fucking love that cigar. Um, and that's that's the cigar that's going to make this list. It checks the Robusta boxes, as Hector said. Um, I, 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 I just want this one. <laughs> I just want this one on the list. And I and uh, like like uh, Hector was saying that, that they've Hoya is really Hoya is becoming that that perennial almost staple on the list. They're kind of. Uh, they're kind of upping their game up into that that Luzione Tatuaje, you know, strength uh, in terms of uh, probability onto the list where it's almost a given at this point. Um, and I think I think they make the list and and uh, I'm with Hector, too. I think it's a top 15. I think it lands around number. I think it lands at number 11 personally. Um, and uh, yeah, that's yeah, I want this one bad. <laughs> All right, um, and yet I'm actually going with a yes on this one. Um, wow. I think I was really torn which one to put on, though, to be honest with you, because uh, the Grand Console checks the box with the with the with the shape, but not the size. Uh, it's a little, it's a th- 60. I don't know if they're ready to put the 60 on there. So I, I kind of went with I aired on the side of caution and went with the Silver Robusto. They will if they ever invite you to be on the panel. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, but I don't know if I'd be the only descending vote on that. I take number one. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go and say, I'm going to go and say they make it. Uh, and again, I have them, I got a 14 or something like that. I think this is going to surprise some people. It's going to be a little high. They got, a, you know, look, all I say is they got in love with Numero Uno last year. So anything can happen. Cause I didn't know if Numero Uno would make it last year, but so I'm going to go with Hoyas, right? It's Nicaragua. You know, I think so. Drew State misses it, but Hoya gets on. Point of order. I remember last year, Hector, you were, the Coop just said it, Coop and I were kind of like, eh, about the numero uno. You were absolutely emphatic and absolutely certain. Are, are you stronger? I know it's kind of hard to think back to your feelings last year, but are you stronger that the that Hoya makes the list this year? As no, compared to last I, I, no, year? no, I think last year, last year, it would have been a, a, a miscarriage of justice if they didn't make the list. Yeah. This year, if they don't make the list, there's, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot and of competition. Yeah. 150 cigars eligible this year. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I, I was more sure last year. Yeah. I mean, and everybody had that cigar. It was a fantastic cigar. Yep. I agree. It was a good, I said, those are two good cigars they have on that too. And uh, they're, they're out in the market for a few years. So they have a little legs right now too. I think there's right. only space for 160 this year on the list, Coop. Yep. I think you're right. I think it's going to be tough. Yeah. All right. So I got three more of these, like two more of these border companies. Then we're going to go to these perennial companies that are in some very interesting circumstances. And let's go with Perdomo. Uh, we kind of mentioned them earlier. Perdomo is, um, uh, I don't remember the last time, I, a, at least since we've been doing this, I don't remember the last time Perdomo Cigar has been in play. I'm not saying they haven't been, but it is on both cigars coming from uh, the uh, 10th anniversary Maduro line. Uh, they have a Robusto and a Churchill both at 91. Um, and um, what I'll just say is this has probably been one of the most successful brands in the last couple of years. So it's definitely good that it's getting on the radar. Uh, I'll start this one off. Um, I love Nick, but he's not getting on this list. Uh, I just don't say it. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, he doesn't get on the list. I think this cigar is a very worthy. That Robusto is very good, in my opinion, um, as well as that Churchill. But I just think it's the numbers game. Not yet. I don't think that happens. So I'm going to say no for Perdomo. Sorry, Nick. But it's again, it's not the reflection on the cigar. Um, Bear. Um, it's it's it was it, what I really like about this cigar qualifying for a score, having a qualifying score on this, it 
I think that it's finally it, it's it's about time that that Perdomo starts getting higher scores. Um, sure, I, I I've never I've it's again with looking at their palate and how the cigars that they smoke and everything like that. You know, considering where Nick makes his cigars and the tobacco that he uses and everything like that. Um, it, it really baffles me how his cigars just historically just score consistently low and don't qualify. Um, that being said, I think this, this, this cigar is, you know, obviously proven it's worth across a lot of a range of palettes. It's, it's made a tons of lists. Um, it's, it's captured the attention of a lot of cigar smokers and a lot of media alike. And so it's kind of, it's, it's great seeing that, um, that all being said, um, I, I agree with you, Coop. I, I don't. I don't think Perdomo makes this list. Uh, uh, history against it, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, um, but it would be, it would be cool to see. And this, but this, I think this would be the cigar that makes it right. I, I think it would be. I think hopefully, if, you know, like I said, this. If this gets on the list, right, you have to look at the historical significance of the year Nick Perdomo's had. That if he lands on this list, plus has that number one. So a couple of number ones from Tobacco Business and um, from Cigar Journal. That's a that's huge. This is gonna be a I think this is gonna be the toughest one for Nova Cub, in my opinion. All right, uh, we go to Ben. Yeah, the Maduro is fantastic. It's a it's a such a great cigar, but I'm with y'all. I don't I just don't think it makes it one because uh, just a numbers game, honestly. And you know, like y'all talked about hit the history. I mean, I just. I think it just misses, barely misses, but it's an outstanding cigar. I would love to see it on the list for sure. I just don't think it makes it. Yep, I think it's a great. Aaron? Yeah, so you guys talked about checking all the boxes, you know, tobacco, wrappers, the whole, you know, different Vitolas. It made it was Cigar Journal number one, the 10th, but I, I don't have it making the list. Um, I'm glad it's getting the recognition, um, just from a quality tobacco, the, the quality of product that's coming out. Um, not yet. I mean, I, you know, we'll see where, what next year holds, but I don't have it on my, uh, on my list. God, that's so frustrating to say not yet for Perdomo, right? Like, <laughs> right. look like at, look at this is the cigar should make 30, it like Nicaraguan tobacco, yeah. Nicaraguan yeah. tobacco, Nick, Nicaraguan tobacco, Churchill. I, I just, uh, God, it, it it checks everything, man. Right, and right. Just, and what I'm saying, yeah. it checks all the boxes. Everything that you you think that they that goes into a top 25, what they look for, Perdomo checks the boxes, but it just doesn't just doesn't make it. Yep, blows my. It takes. I mean, da Davidoff, the same thing, the same kind of historically look at Davidoff not scoring well, right? But what cigar makes it a few years ago? The Davidoff Nicaraguan. Why the, the, the tobacco, right? Yep. It hits their palate. Like that's, yeah. I, it, it's one of the, it's one of the more perplexing things about their ratings. Um, the fact that they review them consist, they do review them consistently, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't matter who reviews their his cigars on the panel unless it's the same person. Miraculously, it just doesn't perform. They just don't perform well. It's, it's just baffling all right now we have hector it's an honor to be nominated but he's not yep. going to make he's not going to make the list yep so this is unanimous on everybody this is a unanimous one on everybody so uh perdomo is a is a miss because of numbers and then the last of these kind of like smaller companies before we get to some of these bigger ones that i think are on the bubble or more popular ones warped so warped has a um the cloud hopper 53 at a 92 and the chinchilla robusto size at a 91 hector does warp make the list this year no i think they're they're going to get knocked out by a smaller company that i have that i have on my list that we haven't mentioned yet okay i don't think they make the list it, this year. okay so they're out aaron well the chinchilla came out late um, you guys know my feelings on warped. I mean, it was I have a soft spot in my heart for warp, but I, I just don't I, no way. I, I say no way they make the list this year. I just don't think it's they I don't think their cigars are strong enough, not in a, in the literal sense, but just in in what they're what they reviewed, what they scored. 
I don't think they make the list. Ben. No, I, I definitely don't think they make the list. Uh, to me, Warped hasn't been as strong in the past couple of years as they have been in the past. I uh, just think this, it, they're not going to make it at all. Bear? So I was wrong. I was wrong the the year before they he that Kyle Gallus got that number the 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 top five cigar. Um, the year before I thought was his year. He didn't make it that year. I guessed that he wouldn't make it. Then he gets in the top five. Uh, so I think I think Kyle wants me to not pick him. So I guess Kyle's getting in because I'm not picking him again. <laughs> I don't think he's making the list. Uh, so if he makes the top 25, uh, I'm, I'm Kyle Gelsis. Look, good luck charm. I just need to pick uh, the opposite of whatever he wants. So, but I, I don't think it's making, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, you know, we've had all these no's, and then I'm always been the descending vote, uh, but not this time. Uh, Warp does not make the list. I don't think Chinchilli, uh, it was late in the year. You know, it's a Dominican cigar out of a new factory. It's very good, by the way. It's, it's very good. I, I, I just Loomis, had one tonight. Loomis, Loomis killed it. Is it chinchale or is it chinchilla? Chin- like how how do you chinchale. say it? Chinchale. Chinchale is chinchale is a small little. We call chinchales those little factories that pop up in Nicaragua out of the blue. You know, it's a small little you know, small little factory. When I first saw it, I thought it was the chinchilla, and I was like, "Why is he naming it after chinchale. a small?" Animal? I had one today. I had one today. It's a good cigar. A small a good rodent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Um. So yeah, we didn't ask. Um, so what I want to do is I want to – these are some – I have now some six bigger companies that I think are on the bubble. Um, hey, Bear, can you do me a favor? I'm going to start this one off. I need to kind of just jump away for a minute here, okay? Okay. All right. Well, then, which – I'm going to tell you. What, I'll, I'll start it off, yeah, and then I'll kind of give you mine. And okay. uh, so the this one is the La Flor Dominicana, um, and they have one cigar on the list this year. It's the Airbender or in, in play that we believe. Uh, the Airbender Chisel scored a 92. This is why I gave so many no's out. This cigar is getting on the list, guys. Um, so I'm going to put this one as a yes. So, Bear, I'm going to turn this one over to you for a minute. Yeah, so um, th- this is uh, the next – actually, the next few cigars, you got to think about this, guys. The next few cigars are some of the some of the staples that we see on the list every single year. We are talking about La Florida Minicana right this second. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it is – it it's we were bit, we've been talking about numbers game we've been preaching that this whole show uh, some of us more than most uh, myself included and that um i i'm in agreement with coop uh la florida minica is not missing this list the chisel performs well historically so it is the right cigar uh even though it's, it's a little bit lower rated at a 92 uh you know leo gomez isn't missing this list and and so i i feel like it's gonna it's gonna land um so that that's kind of that's kind of my vote on it. Uh, so why don't I go over to uh, Ben? What what do you say about La Florida Minicana this year with the uh, with the chisel? Yeah, I, I think they make it. I mean, just because LFD always seems to make the list so with something, mm-hmm. and this is their only cigar they have. So this, this is going to definitely be on the list. I mean, the historical patterns are shown. They're going to be on here no matter what. So I think this does make it for sure. What what do you think is it about the chisel? Uh, and what do you think about what is it about the chisel? Because it's an unusual, it is an unusual size, and we talk about Bellicosa's Figurados performing well, but it is, I mean, it is truly one of a kind when you when you talk about the Figurado Bellicoso shape. What do you think it is about that? Um, because we always say this is supposed to be a blind tournament, right? Well, yeah. when they see a chisel, they know what they're fucking smoking. Yeah. So yeah. Sure. Yeah. What, what what do you think it is about that particular Vitola that that speaks out? Do you, is it just is it just the brand recognition, or do you think that they 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 really they just gravitate towards the Vitola specifically? I think it's a little of both, honestly. I mean, I, I think that size it's it's a really cool, unique size, and it actually works well. I mean, I think it's a great great size, but I mean, it, it doesn't hurt that it's from LFD either. To be honest. Hector, what do you think? I think it's the same thing. It's a let's, the, the, Here's the thing. I have three cigars that they're on my list, but they're not on my list. You know, because well, this is what happens when you do this a couple of days in a row. You start, you come back and you look and you start making adjustments and then you adjust. I have, I have three cigars that 
I don't want to say they're repl- they're they're interchangeable because they're not. They're all they're three completely different cigars, but they all kind of three check a box, and you know, uh, it's 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 kind of in play as of right now. I said it wouldn't make it because they only have one cigar available. I mean, they only have one out there. Uh, it's it's a great cigar. I, I love La Fonda Dominicana. I smoke a lot of La Fonda Dominicana. I don't think it's I don't think it's going to make it this year. It's gonna it's gonna pass this year. It's gonna, and it's they've I mean they've they've had seven in the last eight years, so I mean they they have missed a year. I just think uh, you know what happened with you know production and 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 you know the the whole COVID with the what is it the what were they calling it the uh, uh what was the whole that was the whole term that we've been using for the last couple of months the keeping up with supply and so the supply chain thing that's they they you know they they really had an issue with that and i think that's why they only had that one cigar maybe that was that was reviewed i think it's what goes against them what why i didn't put them on the list is only have one cigar i think they they're not going to make it this year unfortunately but there's a couple when we get later on in the list there's that one and two other cigars that i hope to talk about in the next little while you'll see where you'll see where i had the where i had my conundrum as we were talking about earlier aaron what about you Okay, so we talked about the staples, right? Who put up that list of the 13 that make it every year? I want to not put this on the list. I, it's nothing against LFD. I like, I think the Chisel's a phenomenal cigar. There's so many reasons why I don't want to put this on the list. The only reason I have it on the list is because it's, it's that one through 13 staple, makes it every year type of thing. The, you know, the leave of the ash week, you know, the list that is always there. I have them making the list. I have it very, very low. I have it like 24, I think on my list. Um, I wouldn't put it on it personally, just for the things that not only you guys talked about. I totally agree with Hector. They've got one cigar, but it is LFD. They know it's the chisel. Like they knew the Andalusian bull was what that was. I mean, let's, let's face it. When they go to review that cigar, they know exactly what it is and they're going to put it on the list. Would I know, but what the hell do I know? So, but long story short is yes, I do have it on the list. So interesting enough, we are talking about the numbers game, right? So here's another, so here's another brand that only, that is a perennial staple on this list. And it only has one qualifying cigar this year, which I mean, when we were looking at the data, I was blown away. And I, like I said, I'm a subscriber. So I pay, I, I look at these reviews every single, every single issue. And I also have in Cigar Insider and I look at those, this, those vertical tastings that they do and everything. And I was blown away that this was the only one that came on. So Alec, Alec Bradley makes the, makes one qualifying cigar this year. Again, a lowing scoring effort, a 91 with the Alec and Bradley Kintsugi. So Alec and Bradley, under Alec Bradley makes the list last year with the EP Carrillo made uh, gatekeeper. Um, this year, the Kintsugi is the only one that has a qualifying score. Does this make the list? I'm going to go last on this coop. I'm going to toss it to you. If you're back, Why don't, back what do you yeah. think? What do you think? We're on the Kintsugi, right? On the Kintsugi. Uh, much like what I said with La Florida Minicana, Alec Bradley does not miss this list. Um, they will get on this. Um, they will have this cigar on there. And, uh, again, that's why I had a lot of these no's above. And, uh, you know, this Kintsugi, we've been talking a lot about it in the back channels. It's contending for a very high placing in the consensus right now as well. Um, and this has landed on a lot of lists at the top of a lot of lists, but, that has nothing to do with the CA list here. Um, it's going to get on that, but I do, I'll kind of hold off where I think it's going to land. It's not, I don't think it's going to pull a gatekeeper like last year is what I'm going to say, but I'll kind of hold off where, where, um, where it happened. So I, I have Alec Bradley Kintsugi uh, getting in. Uh, so I guess now uh, who's next Barry, are you going now? Are you, um, no, I was gonna. I was gonna go last on this one in particular. Okay. Uh, uh, so go. We'll toss it over to Ben then. Yeah, Ben. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I love this cigar. I really oh. like. I, I the the robusto is not my favorite size in in this line, but 
I do think it makes it. I do. Um, I, I think it's probably going to be somewhere in the 20s. But they, I had do the think- Corona, they had the Corona Gorder on this one, didn't they? Yeah. Well, Busto's Ben's favorite. He misspoke. The, oh, okay. I'm Busto's sorry. Ben's favorite. Oh, okay. right. You're right. Right. Oh, yeah. The Corona Gorda, their Busto are my two favorite sizes. The Rebusto is the one that I prefer over all of them. Yeah. Um, I do think it makes it. I think it's a quality cigar. Alec Bradley always seems to have something on here. Um, and I, I think it's, you know, this one deserves the accolades it's been getting. So I, I think it makes it. Aaron, what about you? What's up? Yeah, so I'm going to go a little contrarian, not in the sense that I, I think it's going to make the list. And I also think not only the Corona Gorda, I think it, it's going to be high. I think it's, it's and where I placed it, I have it very high in their, their ranking. So yeah, it's, they only have one, but everything you guys have said, and you know, it's, it's been well received. I mean, I, it's making, it's going to be high on the consensus um i think the size checks some boxes and again i think it's going to be high on the ca list could be probably wrong but i got it making the list hector same same scenario different brand different but another well, staple here's, here's the thing there's some cannibalization going on in the top part of this list because unfortunately they're 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 them putting three cubans on regardless uh is is affecting this uh, you have them with one cigar, which is kind of the what I was getting at with the La Flor Dominicana part. One cigar from La Flor, one from Alec Bradley. I know you're going to cover this coming up too. You have two from my father only. Uh, and I think a couple of guys, a couple of the perennials are going to have two cigars on the list this year. That's, uh, I think so too. It and that's, and, and yeah, yep. and, and Padron, I think Padron's going to have two cigars on the list. And I think that's why La Flor gets bumped and Alec, Bradley's, Alec Bradley will make the list. It's the one Corona, it's the Corona Gorda for sure that I had on the list. Uh, and, you know, I think that them, them making all the other lists means nothing to CA. CA is their own, you know, their, their own thing. Uh, but, you know, they've made the list eight years in a row. Uh, I, I just don't see how they're left off. Uh, they, they will be on the list. And because of the three Cubans they're carrying, and I think the couple of the, 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 the upper echelon guys with two with multiple entries, uh, that's why La Flor was bumped. I didn't get a chance to finish that the first time. So, so is that a no? Yes, yes. They'll be on. Alec Bradley will be okay, on. Okay, they'll be on. They'll be on. Okay, okay. La Flor, according to Hector, La Flor Dominicana does not make the list, but Alec but, Bradley does with their right because you know yeah. it's you had two two yeah. perennial guys who were always on the list. Each had one cigar, and then I think you have the problem with Padron and Fuente with multiple cigars plus the three Cubans that always get thrown in there. Uh, that's uh, that's the number. That's the truest of all the numbers games that I've seen in this yep. list this year. Yep. All right, Vera, let's hear. This was a number five cigar of the year for you. Uh, yes, it was wrong size. Um, but uh, but yeah, this was the number uh, five cigar of, of the year for uh, for me that I announced on Sunday. Uh, like Ben, I enjoy the robusto more, but uh, the Corona Gorda gets the score. Um. Yeah, I mean, H Hector makes a really good point. There's, uh, uh, this, there's, there's a couple, there's a couple of brands that I think that I think mess. Um, later on, uh, I think he's dead on with a couple of the ones getting doubles um, too, which, like you said, you, you know, you're running out of spots here when you think about it. Um, but I think I think Alec Bradley squeaks in. I think they're, uh, I think they're a bottom. I think they're a bottom. Uh, ranking cigar I think they're in about that 22 spot 20 21 22 spot um, but they 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 eat again so all right so we were all except um Aaron where no. you had no I had him I had him I just said country yeah. I thought it was going to be high all right so we all have them we all have them we all have them in all right now I added this one in because I'm surprised they didn't have it on the list, but it falls into the same category. Uh, and this is a really, so this one, one number one, this company, one number one cigar of the year. And uh, this is a very, this is a very interesting one. I think it was the most, I can't believe I left it off. E.P. Carrillo. Two, they only had two cigars that got on in qualifying. It was the pledge got on again with the Sojourn size. And the uh, Selection Oscuro Pyramids Royale got, got on 
uh, barely as well. Bullfight, yeah, barely, barely in December. Yeah. yeah, yeah, both at ninety ones. So let's start with Hector this time. Does EP Carrillo return again to this list? They're in that category. I'd say now they're a staple. One of those companies that land every year. Well, they're but, they're 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 not quite a staple staple yet, like the ones that the but they're you know they're they've come on in the last few years. Sure, and they're always you know they're they're that team that they're always in the hunt. I don't think this is their year. Wow. I don't think it's their year. Wow, out. Sorry, Aaron, and I and I, and I love him. <laughs> I love him, and I love the cigar, but I just yep. don't think it's their year. I, I'm with Hector. I I don't have him making the list, so I I. I've, it goes back to what I said about, you know, number ones, then all of a sudden reappearing on the list. And then, you know, you've got the, the pledge prequel. I mean, you, you know, going to throw that down there on the, in the low twenties or something like that. I, I don't know. I, I just don't see that happening. And then I just didn't think that, uh, you know, from a rating standpoint where they had it, the, the squirrel um, Royale, I just, I think it misses the list. I just don't think that's, I just don't think that cigar is strong enough compared to kind of what we talked about slotting and, and room on the list. I just don't think it's strong enough to make the list this year. So I, I said, no. Wow. Two no's so far for the cigar of the year. Ben. <laughs> well, we'll go ahead and make that three. Cause I'm the, I feel the same way. I just feel it's a numbers game with this one too. I just think there's too much other stronger candidates that will make the list. And going about what Hector said earlier, I think I, I agree with him. I think there's a, a couple of companies that's going to have two on here. It's, so it just pushes them out, honestly. Oh, wow. Okay, Bear. So, Cooper, remember we were talking about this off record? Like, we were talking about this before the data, the late data for November. Before the Escura came in. Yeah. yeah we, we and were. I was like, there, I was like, because th this would be, if, if the <laughs> pledge makes it, this will be the first time in history that a number one cigar uh gets on the list the following year with no, the same no. blend no it did it has happened casa magna did it oh that's right you're yeah. right but it and hasn't yeah, happened and it was a dr and it was a huge fall that's right you're absolutely right Coop. i'm sorry i stand corrected yeah, yeah. so very very very, very seldom in history right that this happens so when that set when that second ep carrillo got on in december and it, you, i even cracked that joke i was like oh here there it is right there it is and like I said, I wanted to get, um, in a lot of ways, I didn't really get cute this year with this list. Um, but this is one of those, this is one of those pot take picks, man. I really, I think it misses. I think they miss. I, I don't see Pledge getting on again. I don't see it being a Casa Magna because I didn't, I've completely forgot. Oh, we're going to be honest. I completely forgot about it, but I don't have, I don't see history repeating itself that way. Great cigar. They clearly like it. And it will be interesting. What a point of discussion. If the pledge misses, how does the cigar that's not only was the previous number one, but the highest rated number one in the history of the list miss the list the following year? It's an interesting, interesting point of discussion. But well, I think it actually is out. And Bear, I've had this, and, and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but I've had this conversation with, with other folks about that whole idea. I mean, you'll have an Oliva V, just in a different size makes it year after year. And then you have like something. And I, when I first started smoking cigars, I mean, I fell in love with that Le Bijou 22. And that thing just disappears off the list from forever. So it's like, how can a cigar go from number one to not making the list ever? So it'll be very interesting if they, if it doesn't make the list, which I said it wouldn't um, from a number one highest rated ever. I don't know. All right. Um, I, as usual, I'm the descending vote here. I'm saying uh, it makes it with the pledge uh, sojourn. Um, and I kind of go with Jay's, Jay's comment. He just made it. it's Casa Magna Complex. They love to keep the number one and, and, and other sizes on the list in the future. Um, and it's very close to that prequel size is what he said. But I do think it's going to be a dip. Uh, Ernesto will not be at the top of this list. I think this scar will probably come out of the tournament with like a 93 and eke into the top 25, similar to what happened there a couple of years ago. This happened a couple of years ago, if you remember with Encore. Like, and then the year after, it was like nothing for Ernesto, and, and, he, and he scraped on. He scraped, he scraped on, on, yeah. I, I think, think they're not going to – I think this cigar makes it, but it's not going to be top 10. I mean, 
it's it's not gonna be top ten for sure. So, um, but I I agree, I understand what everyone's saying. I'm look. This is why I had so many no's with the smaller companies we were going through earlier on, because I thought that there were a lot of these scenarios that I'm I'm, I'm gonna kind of I have a couple now that will change as we go through this with my yes vote, but I'm gonna go yes. And that next co, we have three more companies I want to hit. And if anyone else has a company they want to name for Bubble, let me know. Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, Foundation only had one cigar. Charter Oak Abano Lonsdale at a 92. Um, I'll start this one off. This does not make it. So me neither. Uh, I, agree. I agree with you. Size, I just think right now they're looking for something maybe newer from Nick. But no. Uh, Charter Oak's a monster seller brand. Though. You keep that in mind. Yeah. I think it makes the value list. I think you'll see this on the value list. At mm -hmm. Yep. That's just what I was about to say. I agree with you too. I, it doesn't make the foundation doesn't make the list this year. Similar to uh, the Matt Booth, you know, missing the list. Uh, he didn't even have a qualifying cigar, but foundation only had one qualifying cigar and they're not one, using one qualifying cigar and they made it last year. So yeah. I mean, that's, 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 that's... I, I, I go back to, and I, I know we got to do Ben still. So. I don't, Ben, if you were at the trade show, remember when they did the, were you at the trade show where they did the movie opening for uh, Handrolled? Yeah, I did, yeah. You remember who Nick was sitting next to? Like, went right and sit next to <laughs> Savona. He was yep. sitting right next to Savona. And I'm like, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, I knew that there's a good relationship there, but I just don't think that this, I think they'll recognize him with the value cigar that way, and he, and he won't get on there. So, Ben, I'm curious on you. Yeah, I, I, I agree with all what you're saying. It's a fantastic cigar. Lonsdale is probably one of my favorite sizes. Everybody knows that. But I think it just misses. And I, but I do think it does make the value list. It has to. It's one of the best value cigars on the market today. Yeah. All right. So we got everyone there, right? I think we all say no. I didn't go, but. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Aaron. I'm sorry. Yeah, Aaron, fine. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm forgotten. Don't worry. Black, I'm the redhead. <laughs> so oh, you're not. No, you're not. Yeah, I know. I, not sponsored by anybody. I get it. Um, no. So yeah, you got to make your own. You got to make your own sponsorship, buddy. See? Don't worry. You know what, Hector? I'm going to use that T-shirt idea. I'm going to start hanging some cheap trick stuff behind me over here. Absolutely, uh, buddy. You know, or, or a, a six neck, a six neck, a uh, six neck cigar. Uh, yeah. Uh, guitar, I'm sorry. Knuckle yeah. Sandwich Studios would look nice there, though, Hector. I'm just saying. I'm working on it, buddy. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I have it. I have it missing the list, and uh, I, I, yeah, it'll it'll absolutely make the value list. Um, along with what I hope is the uh, Buffalo 10 Connecticut shameless plug for that cigar. I, don't think, I think Duffel, it didn't score high enough, it though. Did, yeah, it did. But, yeah. yeah, but it can make the value list. I think the value list is anything. I don't think they have a scoring thing with that. Yeah, no, I, that's why I put on the value. It's not going to make yeah. the top yeah. 25. But no, I have I have the I just don't think the charter. I mean, the Lonsdale is good, but it's just not strong enough this year. Yep. All right. So two more we have, at least I have here. The next one is Tatawahe. Uh, for uh, he has two cigars: the uh, Tatawahe Black Britannia's Extra and the Reserva K two two two, both at ninety two. Hector, does Tatawahe make the list this year? I had them. I had them on the list uh, with the Britannia, and then I smoked the K two 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 today, and I replaced it. So I have him on the list. I have him right around 10, 10 to twelve. With the K222. Yeah. It's a good cigar. All right, Aaron. I, I, I too have the K22. I have him making the list. I don't have it that high, but I think he makes the list with that uh, cigar. I, I, I'm with Hector as usual, I think. <laughs> good, good company. Good company. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, I, I think uh, of the two, I, I, you know, again, this comes in a personal preference, but I thought it was the better of the two cigars and I have that on my list. All right. And there. Well, Pete's going to be absolutely relieved because I'm not picking him to be really high on this year's list. So he'll be relieved to hear that because I keep jinxing him year after year. So he'll be relieved to hear that part of it. Um, I, I kind of went back and forth. It's interesting that I feel like Hector and I had the same experience the last few weeks as we're kind of going through some of this data. Uh, and some of this, I, I was thinking too, uh, the botanicist as well. Um, it, uh, it, it actually is the more recent score as well too. Um, but yeah, I think 
I, I think the K22 makes it um, for, for, for Pete this year. So, um, yeah, I think that's I, ta, yeah, Pete's going to make the list, but I think that's going to be the, the cigar that makes it. All right. And uh, I think it's unanimous on this one. I'm, and I think I'm leaning towards, I think we're all with the K222. Uh, Pete will make this. I think Hector. Wait, you gotta go to, go to gotta go to Ben. Oh, I'm sorry, Ben. Go ahead, you go first. From the Tatuai Studio, no less. Yes. Yeah, so, I, I I jinxed the Tatuai Black Mountain Studio there. I mean, listen. What am I? What am I gonna say? Really? I mean, no. Honestly, I mean, I'm a big Tat fanboy. That's everybody knows that. I I personally think it's gonna be the Britannica. I like I, the Tat Black. It's phenomenal. I, I I love that cigar. It's a great size. You know, it checks the boxes that we've been talking about. I, I think it's that one out of the two that makes it. It would surprise me if either one of these are on it, but I, I, I'm pretty positive one of these two will definitely be on it, but I think it's the black. Uh, yeah, and like I said, I'm, I'm you know, I, I lean towards the K22 because I know they love that Reserver blend. Um, it's made in the U.S., uh, which I think they tend to be a little bit of an edge with that, so... Uh, but the Britannica is, is a great cigar. Jay was mentioning it's hard to order these right now. So those Britannicas. So, uh, and these were reviewed earlier in the year. So let's see. I put some of them aside. But yeah, I think Pete's going to make the list. I think Hector, right where you said, uh, just on the outside of the top 10. This could be a classic number 11 or 12. I could see it as. It's exactly where I have them. I'm at yep. 11. Yep. I could see that. And the last company. And this is, I think, the most interesting one. I saved it for last. My Father's Cigars, a staple of this list for many years until last year um, when they fell out of the top 10 for the first time in a while. Two cigars that are on this list that are in play are the Judge Grand Robusto at a 92 and the La Grand Oferta. I did not put the size on there. I apologize at a 91. Does my father make this list bear? No. Wow. I think the my father base is covered with Pete getting uh, in the top 25 again. Uh, so I think they're covering their base there. But and I think I do not think they make this list. I think they're replaced. But like I said, you, we've been kind of working through this and, and everything like that. And you, you run you run out of spaces and there are you know, there are those three Cabano cigars that are always going to make it. And I think that, like I said, we're going to talk a little bit more about it here in a second, but I think there are some perennials that get two choices yeah. this year. Yeah. And yeah. so that's why you lose it out. And no. Brand is off. killing, Brand is killing you, by the way, just, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure, he, I'm sure he is. So. <laughs> All right. Ben Lee, does my father make the list or not? No, they do not. Wow. I'm, well, I mean, listen, we got to go back to what we said about, you know, Bichardo, Ace, Prime, and Crown Heads. We have to use the same logic here, right? And out of all these cigars, the Tatawahi stuff is much stronger. So I, I, I'm, I'm kind of with Bear. They're, they're, we got the My Father cover with, with Pete's stuff. There's, there's both, both his cigars are stronger entries than either of the, either of the My Father stuff. So I, I think they're out. Wow. Two outs. Aaron Nielsen, does my father make this list? Well, I'm going to dissent with Baron and Ben. I'm going to say they do with the Oferta. I, I don't think it's going to be the judge. I, I have the Oferta. Now, again, I wouldn't put them on there if it were me. I just don't think that they're these cigars particularly are what I would consider the um, from a um, raking standpoint, maybe deserving to make the list, but I just think it's my father. They make the list. Hector? It's, it, that's, this is a dunk. This is a slam dunk. He makes the list. He makes the list and maybe not as high as he's used to making it, but uh, that's okay. Like like uh, Bear, like uh, Ben was saying, the Dabo is going to do well. And I think uh, he will. The my father will come in somewhere at the uh, somewhere at the bottom part of the list, but it's still going to come in. I'm getting I'm getting killed by two of my favorite people <laughs> in the chat here. Uh, 
This is not about like killing my father here. This is a no, it's not, no. It's the, the, do you think it's so? Jay's like really insistent here. Jay Davis is really insisting here. Top seven for the judge. I. I, I said hard no on that. I mean, I, I it's a no for me for my father in the top twenty five. I mean, if they get in, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. I'm you know I've been I've been wronger about you know worse things, but um, but I I can absolutely tell you that it's they did not make the top seven. I'm just I'm I'm I th- as much as Hector says it's a slam dunk that they're in. I think it's a slam dunk that they're if they're in, they're definitely not a top seven this year. Hmm. So I'm the descending vote. I'm the deciding vote here on this one. Um, oh boy. Um, Judge has made this list before and has been a top 10 cigar before. Um, and I just feel that um, they're not going anywhere. Uh, my father on this list. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to lean towards um, the judge made it number seven with the grand Robusto in 2017 and i think they they get back on this list i think they could i think it could even be they didn't make top 10 last year i think they'll crack it even uh i'm not just doing overly the oferta is i could see them even throwing the oferta was a robusto by the way i just went and checked that which checks the box but i'm gonna lean towards the yes on here uh because it's my father and they have not missed this list in a decade uh, like I said, last year was a very weird year. The, Ant- the Antiguidad kind of snuck on there with a, with a line that's kind of one of their, I would say it's not one of their better selling lines. So, um, and, and whatever it is, they never embraced, CA never embraced the Fonsecas. And I think that but has they, hurt but my they made father. The list, but they made the list last year. They, they made, made it with the Antiguidad. They made it with Antiguidad last year, not Fonseca. Didn't Fonseca make the list last year? Hold on no. a second. It was no, it was it was Antigua. Yeah, it had one. Yeah, it had a qualifier. Yeah, it was a lock for uh, me last year. The Fonseca was the last. Twenty twenty, the Fonseca Petit Corona was number eighteen. You're right. No, you're right on that. I'm thinking the year before. I'm sorry, you're right. But they never that never became one of the big. So they've had two years in a row they haven't made the top ten. Because Antigua was the year before. So they've kind of been they've kind of been falling stock, I think for sure on the CA list after, you know, having it. But I don't think we're going to be talking about my father getting a third number one this year. I just don't see that happening. No, and I, I, that's uh, – that, that Fonseca is probably my favorite my father line at the moment. That is a fantastic line. But, I mean, I don't know. All this crap going on in the chat makes me want to retry the judge because I really dislike that blend a lot. I, I, I thought it was a miss for me too. Um, it, you know, they did it in some of the, it was a bigger ring size originally line. And I just think it was okay. And then I don't think the smaller size is translated to that as well. I agree. I completely agree with all of that. Yep. You're talking about, are you still talking about Fonseca? No, yeah. the judge. Oh, the the judge. judge. I'm sorry. Oh, the judge. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yep. Cause yep. the Fonseca, that Cedros was fire. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. I agree. That's my favorite okay. as now. Is there any other bubble brand, bubble brand or company that we want to talk about before we kind of move on to some of the uh, highlights at the top of the list? I'm going to give you guys. I'm going to. I, I, I know we're going off topic here, but I've got one that that I have on my list, and I want to get your guys' opinion. Okay. I've got the Padilla 88, and I know it's probably not going to make the list. Make well. I, I put it on the list. I look off the score and I, it's a brand that they had put on in years past. And I want to get, did anybody put there on their top 25? No, years no. ago, man, years no, I, ago. I, know. I have, you know, I, I have a couple of cigars like that, like that, like the Padilla that popped into the top 25 a couple of years in a row back, uh, what, eight, nine years ago. He had uh, a little streak going for a while. He had just yeah. like you know, he had a, yeah. he had a nice streak yeah. going. Yeah, he had a couple but top I, tens, I, I think. I don't, I don't have him. I don't have him. In my I don't have it either. Okay. Um, not to get yeah, it's interesting. It's it's a, again numbers I look at too, and I think there's some other companies that have kind of come into favor with CA over the years. I have two. I have two boutique plans that we haven't talked about that are in my top twenty-five. I'm sure we'll okay. get to them later. Though. Okay, if you you could do them now, or we could do them later if you want. Yeah, well, I think the one that's not uh, this one, uh, it's a it's I don't want to say it's a bubble brand because it's still it's still it's practically a brand new brand, but it's it's got great traction. The cigars are fantastic. 
the tobacco is fantastic. The the top of the organization is fantastic. Placencia. Placencia is going to make the top 25, in my opinion. The Placencia, mm. I'm afraid the Generation V is going to make the is going to make the top 25. I agree. I agree. That, I agree with you on that one. It, it's going to make it relatively high, not top 10, but it'll be between 10 and 20. It's going to be it's going to be there, and it it, it bumped down. That's why we're having so much trouble with some of these more established brands that are, like I said, yeah. they're cannibalizing each other. And the other one, uh, you know, when when we talked about why I didn't, we, we talked about one boutique brand and I said no, because I already have another boutique brand in there. Yep. I think uh, Curavari is going to make the list. Really? Curavari wow. made the list several years ago. It did. We're, it's a tough Cura, one. I... But they, they, they scored very well, high rated. Uh, you know, and, and I don't want I, I, I don't want to keep with that check the boxes thing, but you know, just like I threw Blackworks in there to be you know for their first time, Corvari is going to be is going to be a repeater. I, in my opinion, I think Corvari will okay. be in there. Okay, we're kind, of answer, we're, we're kind of answering the next question already, which and is what bland comes on to left field to, to get to the top twenty five. So we have Padilla and Hector. You've said Placencia and um, Corvari. So, I mean, these are, these are, this is kind of going right into the next topic, which is good. So, Ben, do you have a top, like a brand that comes from left field to hit the top 25 this year? I was going to say Placencia. That was going to, who I was going to say, too. I, they're just putting out some amazing cigars, just great, great stuff. They've got to be on that list this year, you know? But what? Every, every year is something new, and every year is something different, and every year it's- yeah. So, love it. you know what's interesting? Uh, I have that Placencia, the, the, the one that you talked about, Hector. I have that, and I put that in my top 10, but I guess I didn't look at them as left field anymore. And just because of the, the quality of, of what they've been putting out, I mean, they're I relatively far differently than I did the Padilla, which was for me way left field, but I saw how high they scored it and just well, went Padilla's off. Padilla's been around. Padilla's been around a long time. I mean, he's been, he's been yeah. in the industry a long time. Placencia's one in their fourth year. Four for fifth year, yeah. Uh, and they've got what three? They've had they've got two or three in the top twenty five already. So I and I just think they're 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 hitting their stride. I think that I, I I just don't see how you. It's one of the first cigars I put in my list when I started to do this list. It's one of the first cigars that went in there. Yeah. So. Hey, Hector, what was the curve of Ari? You said you, you thought would make it the Cremas C one hundred. Oh yeah, that's a really good cigar. I'm a big fan of Curavari. I, I would love to see him on this list. That, that'd be something else. I, I mean, know. I think I think you know when if you're putting a list together and you have 150 cigars and all of them are worthy of the top 25, all of them, you know, they're on they they all scored high. Maybe they're not all worthy of the top 25, but if they make the top 25, none of them. There's very few of them that you sit there and you go hmm, and you scratch your head, you know. But uh, it's just you know it's it's nice. It, it shows you know if if the list was if the list comes out according to the one I have here that I'll share with you guys later, it, it's a nice mix of old established stuff. The, some of those, some of those guys that are perennial, some of those guys who have become perennials and some new flavor because, you know, the new flavors drive the, you know, new cigars and new cigar, mar- new cigar companies drive the market as well. You know, yeah. drives interest. That's good. Bear, do you have a left field one? Uh, I mean, it's kind of, some of them have already kind of be talked about. I, I, <sighs> I, I love Curavari too, and and they have made this list before. Uh, it was a really high scoring cigar. It was like top I, ten, wasn't it? Top ten? Yeah, I smoke. Yeah. I, yes. I and I smoke this cigar too, and I really enjoy it. So I could see why, um, I could see I could see why it scores well. They're always consistent too. We talk about consistency, right? Um, I I just I just didn't see. I just didn't see this, the Curavari making it uh, again. I, but I mean, <laughs> Hector knows what he's doing. He's, he's scored, he's, he's gotten, every, you know, a bunch, all these years he gets, he gets, he's always comes in with these, um, these picks that, that end up making it and doing well. I've been looking at this list. I mean, I think the the interesting one it's, you know, cause there's always like a value cigar that pops onto the top 25 list. A couple of years ago is actually a couple. The Casa Magna was the number one, way back in the day um but i think uh my dark horse one is actually the brick house so i I thought about that one too as as did i as did i but i think when you talk jc newman and julius caesar 
and Opus and Fuente Fuente and Jose Fuente, they kind of, you know, it's, 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 they're all different, but they kind of all kind of are, are synonymous or are all recognized as kind of under the same umbrella a little bit. So they do tend to, they do tend to, to get in each other's way. Listen, it's uh, what I've noticed is when I've done this list over these last eight years, and I mean, I've done pretty good, 20 to 25 pretty much every year. Uh, I, I can't go on what I like. <laughs> I can't because right. it, the list would be completely different. But, you know, there's just there's there's just a method. There's there's a method and 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 you have to you have to see that, you know, it, it, it's I it's it's not what it's not what I would smoke. My top 25 would be completely different. Not completely. There'd be about half of these would be in there. But there'd be the other half would be more, you know, stuff I really, really love. So, Hector, with your your non proclivity towards Cubans, right? Um, the Havana cigars. When you're doing this analysis and you're picking your Cubans, and like we, you know, I've alluded to a couple times tonight, you you're really good at this, um, and you, you you're really accurate. You're in your. How do you how do you go about picking the Cubans? The Havana, yeah, the Cubans. No, I just if you ask Coop in the list I send him every year, I just write one cuban another cuban and the third <laughs> okay fair enough because i could care less about you know about cuban <laughs> cigars but i mean I, that's just me that's my personal opinion but i there's but you still one get the look, spot though that's the crazy yeah. thing you still get the well spot. the cohiba look the, how can you not how can you bet against cohiba you know how can you bet against cohiba and then the one i told you earlier that Billy, bolivar bellicoso fino mm -hmm. It's three times that's made the top 25. I mean all, all you gotta do is look and go hey okay <laughs> there it is again you know it's uh uh, and this year, and they love they love those you know they love those they love those series D Spartacus. So I put that in there as well. So those are the three I have this year. My three Cubans are those. Before I kind of mention what mine out of left field is, I got to make a comment about what I'm smoking here. So I'm smoking. This is a cigar I got from Bear. This is the Diesel S3. Uh, this is the Diesel S, uh, S3 Puro in the Toro size. I scored the Robusto in '88, right? Bear, this Toro is a different animal completely. This is the second time Diesel's done this to me, okay? They, <laughs> they give us the Robusto size, the review, and the other sizes, but this is fantastic, this size. Hey, this is this is give away nice. the Robusto. You always give away the Robusto. I mean, but, but the Toro <laughs> is one. Justin basically gave away potentially a 91 rating, all right, from me on. This is fantastic in this you size. You can still smoke it. You can still smoke it later and, and read it, grade it later. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's eligible next year. It's Somewhere eligible. Justin Andrews is laughing at you. Justin, yeah. Justin, I'm sorry. This is They did this to me with the Whiskey Row as well, and it was the Churchill that was the better. The Churchill style. was fucking phenomenal. But this, yeah. Bear, I see what you're saying about this Toro. This is, this that, is that, that Toro. The Toro looks – I almost thought it was a 660. It looks – it's a big Toro. It's a 54. They're saying it's a 54. Um, yeah, it's, it's it, a little it, bit bigger gauge. Yeah, but this is – Bear, I see exactly where and you had the Toro on number two, Correct. right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. This is why it. you gotta smoke Vitolas, right? You don't have the gauge, you don't have a gauge in your office, Coop. I gotta get I'm gonna get you one of those for Christmas. I have one, it's just not here. It's in the yeah. office office, yeah. And that's made at ages, right? It might be a 55. He does mm -hmm. he does, he makes a this bunch is, of cigars. This is this right? maybe a this may be a 55. This is fantastic, this size. I mean, holy cow. Uh Justin, big miss. And I'm sorry if I picked on him about this the other night, too. Um, because now this is the one you sent me, Bear, in my last mm -hmm. packet. And I'm just, wow, I'm going to get more of these. All right. Uh, so my brand from my field falls similar to what you did, Bear. I have the Casada Casa Magna Churchill. Um, I know Ben uh, just had to take a – he's back now. Um, based on my experience of smoking the Casa Magna Colorado Robusto, which was smoking at another level – um, I think that Casada makes a comeback with this cigar on the list. I don't think anyone's expecting Casa Magna to make a comeback with this. It's a Churchill size. It fits the, it fits the, uh, it checks the box. So I'm going with Casada, Casa, Ma Casa Magna, Colorado Churchill is my pick. You know, that I had Casada right, right at my cutoff line. They were the next spot right underneath La Flor Dominicana. Cause I have La Flor Dominicana at 26 and I had Casada at 27. Because but I, I know. They like a comeback story. They and they like Manolo. Manolo is a yeah. Hall of Famer and all this other stuff. And I didn't get a chance to smoke that cigar. And I, when I, I met I met his daughter a couple of weeks months ago on a on an, at an event. And they were very charming. And you know they're they're working. You know they're you know they yeah. they're Hall of Famers for a reason. You know. Look, I'm telling you, Ben and I smoked that Casa Magna Robusto. It was the best cigar I smoked performance wise in 2021. So and you guys. We were on that call, so we did a hearth, the, the four of us, and you guys were talking about that that 
uh, Casa Magna, Colorado, I went out and got a box and I have given a couple to people and they were blown away how good that cigar is. Yeah. I, I was blown away how good that Robusto and that Casa Magna is. Right. Yeah. And that's the one that got number one. But again, I'm going to just put a little money in. I haven't smoked the Churchill this year. I plan on doing it soon. And because I think, um, I think it's going to make a comeback. I can see it doing well in the tournament. So we'll see. Because it's, again, the performance of that cigar, it's hard to ignore it. You bought a box, Nielsen? <laughs> so like so bizarre for you. He only, he, only, he only buys boxes, buddy. No, <laughs> he does a five pack. No one likes to, no one likes to know it all there, Bear. You know what? <laughs> if this were not a family program, I'd tell you where to go <laughs> pick it up your right. parking. <laughs> you, you, got a five pack. you got a five pack the other day. You're like, I went ahead and got a five run something. I was like, oh shit, man. I'm not buying this. Uh, uh, what's, what's, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I only buy boxes. <laughs> <laughs> my man uh, ben, gives me, ben gives so, me so much yeah. shit it's unbelievable Men, right. in the spirit of that Aaron, you get to pick Aaron, you get, falling down on him. i don't know what the hell's going on over there Aaron, you get to pick my next cigar so i've got the uh i've got the uh la laranja azulejo yep made by, our, made by our good friend hector alfonso here the rocky patel grand reserve and my number one cigar of the year the dissident rave well, since, next. all right. So go with the uh, Laranja. Um, now I will say that that Reserva. I gave you that Ben. I think at uh, at Michael's that night. I don't think mm -hmm. you had had that before, and uh, mm -hmm. that a phenomenal cigar in my opinion. But I'm going to have you smoke one of Hector's. Sounds good. All right. Very good. <laughs> so. All right, here's the next question. We're actually moving very good with the agenda tonight, guys. It's, it's, we're, we're getting that deep. So th we've talked about these bubble cigars, right? I want to focus on the top 10, all right? And here's my question to everyone. And we ask this every year. Of these, of these cigars that normally make the top 10, right? And uh, try to think a little out of the box here on this one, but I think I know a lot of the answers are what they're going to be. Who misses the top 10? Like that is normally a staple this year. I think, and I think it's going to happen this year for sure. Well, we already talked about it. My father, my like, father. They, like they missed it last year. The top think, 10. Yep. The top 10. Okay. Yep. Top I think 10, unfortunately yep. they missed it. They miss it this year. Uh, and my, according to my top 10, that's the only one I have. That's not in the top 10. That usually is in the top. 10. Okay. Okay. And of course, and I have only one Habano this year in the top 10. Interesting. <laughs> and I'm going to hold that. That, okay, that's going to actually ask in the next question, too. So hold that thought, too, on the Habano. We haven't talked to Habano yet. Aaron, who misses? Yeah, I had my father as well. So, um, and I only had one Habano in the top 10. So I had my father. I said the Oferta, whether it's that or the judge, but I have them missing the top 10. Okay. Ben? Yeah, I mean, I've already said it about the, my father. But that's definitely, definitely out of the okay. top 10. Okay. No, I got I got okay. two Habanos in the top ten though. Well, as it's gone lately, I mean, you think about an EP. I mean, he's not going top ten. I don't think. Well, you, I think who maybe you. I don't remember if you said it was, but he's not going to go top ten this year. That was my pick. Was EP Carrillo? Yeah, this is it. Yeah, that was going to be my pick. Was EP Carrillo? I and my father, I agree with, but I'm going to go. They've missed it the last couple of years. The top ten. That's why I'm going to go EP Carrillo uh, on mine. And Bear. Well, I think E.P. Carrillo, I think my father, and I think Alec Bradley all missed the top 10 this year. I think so, too. I don't think there's any I, – I don't think, like – well, I have one more I'm going to add, but is Ashton is the other one I'm going to add. Really? Hard disagree. Hard disagree. Yeah, yeah. Hard disagree. I agree. I think that Ash, – I think absolutely – you look at the scores of those two Ashtons, that thing's going to make the top 10. Uh, I don't – I just – you think the Quintessence oh, is yeah. going to make it. I'm gonna, yes, still, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna still yep. stick by it, and they miss it. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, they but, popped two on the You know what? Time. But you know what? Yeah, that's fat. No, 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 don't, no, don't, don't, no, do, don't, don't, do, don't, 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 uh, EP Crow doesn't make the top 20 and Alec Bradley, the top and 10 Alec. and Alec Bradley doesn't make the top 10. Okay. So here's my next question. This bear, it's a little bit of an offshoot of the question you asked last year. 
I, I put an over under of one and a half Cuban cigars in the top 10. Over or under? Over, but not by much. Yeah, I think two. two. Yep. Ben, how many Habanos make, make the top 10? One, uh, one and a half, over or under? I think over. Okay. Make the top 10? Oh, yeah. So, yeah oh, over, sorry. Oh, one and a half. So you're in the greens with me. Got it. Got okay. It. Yep. Yep. I said, I'll go. I said under. I said I got one. Um, I have them slotted in that like four, 11, kind of 17, 18 range where they've done in the past. So yeah. I've got one. And Hector, you said under, right? I have one. Yeah, I only have one in there. Okay. I'm going over as well. Um, but I think it'll be one in the top five, one in the bottom five. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Normally, like I said, three is the number that we look at on the list. So uh, I think we're in agreement on that. I have a question for you guys in terms of that 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 over-under. Um, how, how long until a Cuban's number one again? This could be the year. I mean, they've got they've got a couple of cigars that are. I mean, see, they have two cigars right away off the top. If I look at the numbers, that could make it. You know, I I don't understand the resmoke how they do the resmoke there, but I guess they have their ways. But I had they easily any one of these two could be number one. It's just a matter of you know. Yep. Do they or not? And we'll, yep, and we'll hit that towards when we get to our number ones for sure. Yep. So we'll hit that as well. All right. So these are what we call stone cold lead pipe locks. And these are cigar specific here. Now we've been talking brands, but now I want to get a little cigar and I want to go through everyone. And basically we'll go one at a time, like one person at a time, five cigars that are stone cold. Like you're confident that this cigar is landing on the list and you could use the spreadsheet or the scores. It's probably the easiest way to do it if you haven't done it, but these are the ones you're most confident. Like, like for example, you're going to say, uh, Pachardo, I know it's a bad one. Let's say um, if there's multiple Vitolas, you pick one Vitola here. Okay, so, I got yeah. you, I got you. So, so uh, we'll start with you, Hector. All right, my uh, top five, five guaranteed uh, stone cold locks, as you say? Yep, stone cold. Have pick, pick. You, you have to be specific on this one. Yeah. Right, the, the Padron 1964 Anniversary Series Torpedo will be yes. in the top five. Mm-hmm. All right. The Oliva Series V Milano Maduro Churchill for the second time will be in the top five. Uh, the Monte Cristo 1935 Anniversary Number Two will be in the top five. The Casa Cuba Doble Cuatro will be in the top five, and the Ilusión Cruzado Robusto will be in the top five. Good Those picks. are my five. Okay, those are good picks. Aaron. Okay, so I've got the Monte Cristo 1935, number two. I've got the Ashton Quintessence. You said that you're not going to make, so I went that one. I went the Oliva V. Melanio Madura Churchill, the Illusione, if I'm going to pronounce it right, the Cusador Robusto, Mm -hmm. and then also the uh, Padron 64 Torpedo. Wow, that looks like my list. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're on the same wavelength, Aaron. Oh, boy. Yeah. Sorry, Hector. Ooh. Happy to bring you down. Nothing right. wrong with that, buddy. All right. Ben. My list is almost identical to Hector's. Um, the only difference is, the honest, I think the Ramon Alionis Gigantes makes it in that last spot. But I think it's I think it's the the Monte Cristo 1935, the Gigantes. Um, I think it's the uh, 64 Torpedo, um, and I think it's the uh, um, Casa Cuba. That's that's my five, and the Melania Churchill. That's my top five. I definitely I think one Habano is, is it cracks that top five for sure. Yep. Yeah, these aren't necessarily they could be anywhere in the top. Top, yeah, top, top, top twenty-five. By the way, but you know, this is that's fine. Yeah, we're going, man. Everyone's going hard and going high on these. Yep. All right, Bear. Um, yeah, I think. Um, I, I mean, I'm. I thought. I thought. I thought I was going to be the unique, weird one, and with my San Cristobal Quintessence pick. 
that's a that's a top three cigar. That's a top three cigar uh, this year. Um, it's the San Cristobal Quintessence, uh, I think, is a Stone Cold Lead Pipe Law. Absolutely, absolutely going to be the top three. Uh, I think the I think Cruzado also makes it. The Illusione um, Cruzado uh, makes the list too. Um, I know we've been talking about. I think two Fuentes make the top ten, and. I think you'll be surprised to see that the rare pink is not the higher of the two Fuentes. And oh, I think, man, I completely so, agree with that. Actually, I a hundred percent agree. Um, but I'll, I'll, I always make, I always pick like a random number and make a solid pick. I think the Cruzado, I think the Cruzado, uh, the Luzone, Luzione Cruzado Robusto makes number six. That's, that's my, that's my, mm -hmm. uh, can That's I throw, I'm, I'm going to throw a while. It, this, it, it, I don't know how I'm going to put this, but I would not be surprised to see the Rocky 60 in Toro make number one. I, I know it's like left field. I'm not even putting my top five, but I just, there's something, I, it, Rocky 60th, they're dying to put Rocky Number one at some point. I love that Toro. It came in late at a 93, but I would not be surprised to see that one number one. I know we've been talking about the 60. Um, and I'm in agreement with the Monte Cristo also making the number two, also uh total luck. I know we've been talking about the 60, and that seems to be the obvious one. Rocky Patel's making the top 10, right? I think I think it's that one you handed to Ben, the one that I got sitting right here, and I think it's the Grand Reserve. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think you know as as much as we've all kind of liked the sixty and and is it's gotten some high the sixty's gotten some high praise and a lot of love, um. But you know, look getting looking at the information I've got and stuff like that. I just I don't know. The sixty C the Monte Cristo thirty five is like the obvious one, right? Yeah. Um. And it's like I said, I sometimes I overthink this and a lot. Of some so. But I, I think when I when I when that when I smoke, I think back in June, I texted you guys when I got that 35 in Churchill, I go, this is going to be the cigar fish now number one. Uh, and so I stuck with it because I didn't want to waver. But I don't know. There was just something I coop you and I talked about that 60 yeah. that Toro from Rocky. I just I don't know. I'm, I'm probably talking out my ass and I it, it, it might not make the top 25, but I don't know. Is there something about that 60 this year and Rocky's year? Did the Toro qualify? I thought it was the 60 guy that got the score. I have the 60 60. What the 60 60 oh, was the one who got okay. the score. That's another reason why I just oh, don't never and the Robusto and the Robusto did too. But you're right, the mm -hmm. Toro wasn't on there, which is kind of completely mind boggling because I think that's the best of the sizes. So I did this because again, I, I looked at locks for the top 25, not top five cigars. All right. So let me kind of go through what I have. These are these are the ones that you're going to see these specific cigars in the top 25. First one is, the, again, this is not necessarily I'm number one or top five, is the Oliva Serie V Melania Maduro Churchill. It will be on there. There's no, yeah. there's no doubt of my mind it's going to be on there. So that's going to be first. Um, I did put the Rocky Patel 6060 as my second. It's going to be on there, on that. Ooh. I just think that's, I think that size is going to hurt him though. Coop picking a 60. Yeah. Shocker. Uh, that's, yeah. yeah that's, 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 that is a shocker. Yeah. Like now, I said earlier, there's only one 60 on the list. It's going to be that one. Yeah. Now, I'm staying away from Padron because I don't know which Padron is going to get on there. So I'm completely staying away from them on that one because I think that's a tough one to pick. Now, there's a lot of Fuentes. I don't think they ignore the rare pink. Um, and I think they go with um, probably they go with the happy ending. So I'm going to pick that as my third right now, as my third cigar. The fourth cigar, and you guys are going to give me crap on this, right? Because I, I said it misses the top 10, but it makes it on the list, is the Ashton San Cristobal Quintessence. I just don't think it's going to be top 10. That's my difference there. Okay. So that's kind of, all right. Mm. Now, Aaron, uh, before I kind of get to this last one, this is I heard Dave Garofalo say this on his show, and I kind of agree with it. There's – you got Monte Cristo's contending with each other from Cuba and from the U S right. So I'm not overly confident right, about which Monte Cristo will make, you know, it, I just think they're not going to put both on the list. Right. I, I would lean towards that Monte Cristo 1935, right. 
because it's a good cigar. But I really think they love, and this is, I think, going to be the surprise pick in the top 10, is I think that St. Louis Carneris uh, is going to be on there in the Toro. I think uh, that St. Louis Ray makes this list somehow. Did you really uh, mispronounce that cigar worse than Ben did? Yes, I yeah, did. He did. He yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I did. And I, I tried to push it over the Carneris. The Carneris. Yeah, the Carneris. Yeah. yeah. The Kyrene. So that's that's kind of where I went with this. And, and that was why I stayed away from Monte Cristo, because I'm just not sure where they're going to go with. Because Monte Cristo, number two from Cuba, is in play on this list. And that always does well. Yeah, but it's not going to surplant the 35 Churchill. There's no way. <sighs> yeah, no, but the number, the, the number two is in there as well. The 35 we... number two. I can't name the, the, the Listen, the number, the Monte Cristo number two, you said the Cuban version? That is the most hit or miss cigar. Of I Cuba. agree. I, I I smoke a lot of Cubans. That's right. that was the one that you never know what you're going to get when you open that box. Yeah. It's either going to be perfect, too tight, or mushy. And most of the time, they're Welcome too to Cuba. tight. Welcome for real. To Cuba. It's that right. That's why I've I've trickled. Like, it used to be fifty fifty for me. I'll be honest. Yeah. Now it's, it's like twenty five percent Cubans now because yeah. I, I keep getting shit cigars. It's you bad. That, you would think these cigars are made in Vegas. You don't know. Let's see. It's Monty yeah. Hall. Uh, do, you guys know, do you guys notice what Coop did? He he tells us to put us our top five Stone Cold Pepe blocks, and he gives five that could be in the top twenty-five. So but that was it. that was that was a question. That was what it was in the uh, notes. That was uh, what was in the. I notes. didn't. I didn't give him my top five. We, we didn't, we didn't go to him. top five. We didn't go to top five yet. We're gonna oh, go to top. Okay. All right. So so if you guys want to rank your top five, we're gonna do that next. Oh. Okay. So yeah, there was a yeah, and I'm sorry for that confusion, Aaron. That probably is my my. Problem. All right, uh, my. Oh, no, Aaron, Aaron can't read. That's the problem. No, hey, I probably... I'm white trash from Rockford. Come on, you know I can't read. You can still say you can still <laughs> say the Carreñas better than Coop and Ben can. Yep. <laughs> All right. So let's go to our top fives, and uh, if you didn't do a top five, that's okay. Uh, let me know, and that's fine. Let's go. Uh, We'll start, and if you want to do your top twenty-five, Hector, you can feel free to do that as well. All right, cool. If, somebody, if you did a top twenty-five and you want to do your top twenty-five, that's fair game. I didn't ask everyone to do a top twenty-five because I knew everyone was busy and moving and stuff like that. So, so Hector, we'll, we'll turn this over to you right now. All right, at twenty-five we have Blackworks. At uh, twenty-four I have Kintsugi. At twenty-three I have Davidoff Signature Number Two. At twenty-two, my father La Gran Ofeda. At 21, Undercrown 10, Corona Doble. At 20, Bejique, BHK 52, or just another Cuban. At 19, I have Pichado Classic Natural. At number 18, Padron de Maso. At number 17, Aging Room Cuatro Nicaragua Impromptu. Now, here's where I told you I had a little, I had, a, I had an issue. At number 16, we've been on the list two years in a row. And yep. we have three cigars this year eligible for this. But gonna, I have yeah. I have a feeling that Warhead, the Warhead Seven is not their kind of cigar. It kind of reminds me of when CAO came out with the uh, what is it, the Flathead? It was a cigar mm-hmm. that really was kind of, you know, it's a little I don't want to say it's it's what's the word I'm looking for? It's uh edgy. You know, it's, it's edgy, you know, it's different. I can see us hitting sixteen or the Macanudo Inspirado Green Toro at sixteen. General's gonna get on the list. Yes. Right, and that's where I, either it's us yeah. or them at, at 16. Yeah. At mm-hmm. 15, I have Placencia with the Almaforte Generation V. 14, Hoya Silver Robusto. 13, Buenaventura Crema C100. Uh, number 12, another Cuban. I, I went with the Hoya Monterey Epicure Especial. At 11, I have the K222. At number 10, I have the Rare Pink Short Story. At number 9, I have AJ with Diaz de Gloria Short Churchill. At number uh, eight, I have San Cristobal Quintessence, Quintessence Churchill. Number seven, Rocky Patel 6060. Number seven, Casa Cuba Doble Cuadro. Elusión Cruzado at five. Monte Cristo 1935 at four. Particle Series D, number four at three. Oliva Series V, Millennial Maduro Churchill at two. And Padron 1964, Anniversary Series Torpedo at one. That's my top 25. That's a solid top 25. Yeah. And the Padron, I, I, I waffled. I waffled on one and two. I'm not going to lie to you. I went back and forth on one and two because, you know, the Padron, Padrones are, 
you know, for drones are for drones, and they're in there every year, and 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 very deservingly so. But the Oliva's been there before. The Oliva that that particular Vitola has been in the top twenty-five before. That's how come uh, I did. So what I was your number one pick? I'm sorry, I totally missed the that. sixty-four anniversary torpedo. Mm-hmm. Okay, Ben. All right, so I'm going to do this on the fly because <laughs> moving across five states, I didn't have a chance to really sit down and look at this real good. Um, but I looked at this a little bit this morning, and my top five would be the Ramon Alionis Gigantes, number five. Um, I think the next would be the Melania Maduro Churchill. Um. Let's see. My number three would be whew, that's a tough one. Um, I think hmm, I know my my top one and two is. Let me see. Oh, uh, it'd be the Monte Cristo nineteen thirty. And I think hold on, uh, Bear. We we lost we lost Coop. Yeah, it's Wait, not recording right now. If you hold on, it's not recording. We lost Coop. So you have a Cuban winning, huh? I don't have a Cuban. Uh, no, I don't have a Cuban winning. Oh, the Ramona Lonas wasn't number one for you. I'm sorry for you. No, I'm going five to one. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you back, Coop? No, he's not. No, I, I hit re- I hit record. Are you recording? He's He's, he's coming back on now. We had a, I don't know what happened. My my connection went. That's all right. But you guys were still ta- you guys were still talking, right? It's yeah. uh, Ben. Ben Lee's on. Did the back yeah. did the backup go down, Coop? Yeah, but I can get it off of Facebook. I'm sure. But everything went off. Everything went offline here, unfortunately. So we'll be able to keep going. I'll I'll, I'll spice these together when they're done. So I didn't hear All Ben's. Right. I didn't hear what came out at the top of Ben's. All right, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go five to one. Okay, number five, the Ramon Alionis Gigantes. Um, the number four. Shit, I already forgot what I had said. Number four. Oh, the Melania Churchill, Maduro Churchill. I think the 1935 Churchill takes uh, third, and my one and two. Honestly, they could be flip flops. I I can't. I couldn't decide between the two. I think it's the Casa Cuba, and I, I I agree with Hector. I think the cigar of the year to me, I think, will be the '64 Torpedo. It, it could be that or the Casa Cuba. That's the I think either one is going to be number one. I just think it's time, I, really, for the Casa Cuba. But we'll see. But I, I'm leaning towards the '64 um, Torpedo being number one. Honestly, Pedrol has got so many really strong contenders that it really could be either one of them, but I'm leaning towards that torpedo. So, um, interesting. I thought there was a lot of, I thought it was tough with that one. Yeah, that's, that one's tough. I, I just think it's, it's Padron's turn again. I, they, I, had the, I, they had the 50th really high too. I was, I was torn between the 50th and that 64. Yeah, I mean the number forty-eight did really good too, but it's yeah. just a weird size, so I don't think that makes it number one or even top five. But I think it's in top ten. So I'll I'll go ahead and go. If that's all right, Coop. Yeah, yeah, I'm still kind of trying to get the so I'm uh, gonna back connected here. No problem. I got number. I'm gonna start with number six and go down just because I already picked my number six pick of the so. Illusione Crusado Robusto. Uh, I, I think you're right, Ben. I think Casa Cuba is due, but I think they're due for a top five and not a number one. So I, at number five, I have Casa Cuba. Mm-hmm. At number four, I have the Hoya de Monterey Epicure, the, uh, the, the Habanos. Um, at number three, I have the San Cristobal uh, Quintessence. And number one and number two. So guys, we've been having these these conversations off. Uh, and I, and I, told, I told Aaron this, and I told Ben you this too, like, I'm I, I I just feel like I've been overthink like overthinking. I've been like dead set on on the Monte Cristo 1935 Nicaraguan making the number one cigar of the year. And I've been saying, I've been saying, I'm 
man, I'm, I'm going to hate myself forever if I'm wrong on this, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to, I'm going to waffle on it and I'm going to put it at number two. And I'm, a, I, again, I, I, I agree with Hector and I agree with Ben on this. It's Padron's year at the top of the list again. Padron is making the top, is going to make the top cigar of the year. And I completely agree. It's going to be the 1964 Torpedo that makes the number one cigar of the year this year. I like it. Good list. All right, Aaron. I do not have the Oliva making the top. All right. By the way. So I'll do the six because we've talked about it. I got the, the Casa Cuba uh, number six. My, fi my five is the Ashton Quintessence. Four is the same as, as Bear. I've got that Hoya de Monterey. Um, Epicure Special number four. Number three, I've got the Oliva V. Melanio Churchill. Number two, I went with the Padron 64 and Torpedo. And just because out of stubbornness and, and I didn't waver because I, I said it to you guys when, when I smoked it, I went with the Monte Cristo 1935 anniversary Churchill as the number one cigar of the year. But you guys make a darn good point about the the being Padron's year. I mean, they've got, I mean, look, let, I, I've said this, in, I've, I've talked to my friends about this and I mean, you could, in theory, you could put a Padron number one every year if you wanted to, and no one would argue. Um, but I've got it number two. And then I've got the, the Monte Cristo 1935 number one. I can see that. I mean, <clears throat> we're talking about the, our two Cubans on there. Three of us have put one on there. The Ramon Alianti Gigantes is one of my favorite Cubans, but so is the Epicure Special. That is a fantastic cigar, and I've never had issues with either one of those, too. I could see either one of those being in the top five for sure. Definitely. The, the outliers that Sancho Panza that is so yeah. great is so high. You know what's so but funny? Go ahead, Terry, Ben. I would just say that's that cigar to me though is not that good. I mean it's good, but not was it ninety four is what it got? Yeah. That's that's crazy high. So I had that. So when I was doing this list initially, I had that in my top five. And when the but then I, I started looking, I'm like, ah, but they had that thing, you know, it's one of those like random Cuban that they'll put in the list that's gonna be really high. And I that Sancho Pazzo. I mean, they had that as I think the highest rated Cuban they had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's it's just I don't know. I don't buy that. I don't buy that rating. That's that's the one. The other the other Cubans they had rated, especially the Partagas, which is our. That's another line. Bolivar and Partagas are are two Cuban lines that I don't ever have issues with, and the rare ones that you could actually smoke, what quote unquote fresh, you know, without sitting on them for three to five years because usually what i do is when i buy my cubans i put them up and i don't touch them for three to five years honestly but if you're going to have if you're going to have one within a year uh, any any of the partagas or the boulevards are okay because they got you a lot what, of body to them you know what i'm surprised uh I, I don't smoke a lot of cubans but what i hear a lot of and i haven't had an opportunity to smoke the trinidad uh line from uh, from cuba Hector, do you? I, mean, I know you've smoked them before. I, where do they, they rank in your your overall impressions of the the Cubans, the Trinidad's? I, I don't know. No, Aaron. On the contrary, I don't. I don't smoke Cuban cigars. Yeah, oh. he doesn't. I don't, oh, okay. I don't. I don't smoke Cuban cigars. Sorry. No, I think. Okay. I mean, listen, I've had. Don't get me wrong. I've had. I've, I've had Cuban cigars before, but uh, you know. It's it's kind of a personal thing, so I don't I don't I don't I don't seek them out. Trust me, I get them all the time, and the beneficiary is usually Alan Schumann or a Caribbean. Hey, look, a guy handed me a Cuban. A guy handed me a Cuban because yeah. look, in Miami, the the percentage of Cuban cigars you're smoking or the greater percentage of they're fake, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then you know you don't want to break a guy's heart. The guy comes in with a box. Hey, look, I got a box of Cubans, and I don't want to be the guy to tell them those aren't Cuban. Though at times I have been, look, those the, the wrapper color is not the same. They're not even the right. Look, the sizes aren't the same. There's not a triple cap on it. So, you know, I, I, I just don't smoke them anymore. 
listen, I did I did hear uh I did hear good things about the Juan Lopez. Do you smoke Juan Lopez has been? Yes, I do, and they are fantastic. Yeah, I love the Juan Lopez cigars. Um yeah. Poy de Monterey, consistent Bolivar, consistent Partagas. Yeah. Uh, Partagas, uh, for me, uh, is a is a fan favorite. The best Cuban and, I've ever had is, uh, and and Ben hit it on the head. Somebody gave me at one time years and years ago gave me three Monte Cristo number twos, and one of them didn't burn, one of them tunneled, and the other one was the best thing I ever smoked in my life. Yeah, that's that's the best that's, things I ever smoked in my life. You literally just that's the that is it on the number two. That's it. It's spongy, too tight, or absolutely amazing. That's that's what you get, and th- that's usually in the same damn box. That's a yeah, problem. That's <laughs> you know, it's freaking ridiculous. That's I've why I've never had a good money number two. I've never Eric, had a good money number two. Several years, from- several years ago, Eric, uh, somebody he came, he went to Cuba with his mother because they had a family member who had passed or something, and he came back with that Quisi qu- Cuse, the one uh, that hit the top twenty. The Quadorce, the Quadorce. Whatever the hell it was, I just say he, QDR, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. He opened up a box and he gave us all one. And you know, I it's the boss, the boss gave you a cigar, you smoked it up. But I was like, well, his was smoking great, mine, mine, not so much, you know. And yeah, and that's that's it's a it's a crapshoot, you know, it's a crapshoot when you get these cigars from Cuba. I've yeah, never had I a mean, good mommy number two, it's 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 bizarre because that's such a huge fan favorite. No, my brother in law, my brother in law brought me some that his uncle makes at home. His uncle steals material from you know, from the factory and, and makes makes cigars at his at his house, and it was pretty good. It was, was hand rolled, you know, hand rolled, you know, uh, uh, bumpier than shit. But he made it. It was salty. It tasted good. Good cigar. But you know, I I, so, I love the Monte Cristo line, but to me, if I'm gonna buy Monte Cristo, it's gonna be the number four or the Edmundo. Yeah. I I usually never have problems with those two lines, but I swear to God, the number two is so most goddamn frustrating creating cigar in the world it's unbelievable but i tell you when you get one and it's got a little bit of age on it holy shit it is bliss it is total bliss so the, but, the power did the power go out in north carolina we are we're we're missing okay. the our, our fearless leader here yeah coop coop's internet's down so we're uh we're gonna truck along here um with this so uh, i wanted to bring out since we're on the topic of uh, of of habanos i had one other one that i wanted to bring to the one other point of discussion i wanted to bring to the table on this Another one, we talked about the Monte Cristo number two right now, a fan favorite, a perennial, uh, you know, placer in the top 25, a former number one cigar of the winner. Let's talk about Bahique. Cohiba Bahique was a number one cigar of the year as well. And it's also one of those, you know, has that huge mystique behind it, really popular for smokers around the world. Um, I think Cohiba makes this top 25 list. I don't think it's the Bahique. I think it's the Siglo Six. That's the I one too. I have. That's the one I Me have. Too. No, I'm no, I'm sorry. I had the BHK Fifty Two. You but, did have the BHK. But when it right. comes, to, but when it comes to Cubans, I'm, it's just I'm just throwing darts at a dartboard. I don't smoke yeah. them, and you know I I'm just I kind of go really on ratings on that one, and and reading a little bit of the review, and uh, that guy seems like he's got a little wood when he's talking about it. Oh, all right, that might make it. You know, I no. I, I I say three Cubans, but I I, I don't really. As long as three Cubans hit the list, I always count those as my three Cubans. I just don't know which. It's not fair to. It's not fair. Not really fair. I don't. I don't smoke them. You know. I know I'm going to be wrong this year again. Um, I think there's two Cubans in the top ten, and I think that's it. I don't think the oh, third one you pops on the top. Really? Yeah. I listen, know. They're, they're wait, been, wait, wait. The top hall twenty five. The hall. I, the tw- you think there's two in the top ten, and there's none in the rest of the twenty five? Yeah, I know I'm going to be wrong, but. There's been three in the last eight years. There have been 24 Cubans in the top in the 200 top cigars. Every year is three, baby. And they're just I'm just I know I'm wrong. they reviewed yeah. 30. They reviewed 39 of them this year. You, three of them are going to make it. <laughs> Forget about it. I, I mean, I I don't know. I mean, ah, shit. There's a lot of they got a lot of really highly rated Cubans on here, but oh man, I I definitely think the Epicure Special is definitely one. For sure. I think the Gigantes is going to be another one. The Dale Sancho Panzer are rated so high, I don't know how that's not on there. But then you got the the Partagas are rated Siri really D, high. Yeah, that's, that's another D one. That's for you. And the Siri D line is freaking one of the best Cuban lines there is. Is that number four? So, the little, that's the little Robusto, right? Yeah, the number six. Yeah, it's a, like the short, short Robusto. 
the number four. I mean, the, the number four. I mean. Oh, the number four. Yeah, uh, it's the, the yeah. one that got a ninety-four. The Serie D uh, number four. Yeah, I have a box of those in there. Matter of fact, um, of course you do. Oh, look who's got the box now. Hey, and about yeah. give me a favor, Ben. In like three to five years, let me know how how it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'll let you know. So, it, part of us I don't age very long. I, I give them about three years. There's so like Cohiba. I I don't buy Cohiba much just because I love the Siglo line. The Coro is probably the the quintessential Cohiba, right? But it's counterfeited so much, and I mean. It's and Cohibas are a pain in the ass because to me, I age them eight, for anywhere from five to eight years. That's what I do because mm. that's what they that that's what they need. They gotta have it. Like the best Cuba cigar I ever had was a Cohiba Esplendido, and it was twelve years old when I had it. I mean, we've all I've all told you the story. I was kind of rested over that cigar, <laughs> but that's but that was twelve years old. But to me, you smoke them. I don't, I don't smoke them less than five years because they don't taste right but somewhere like they hit to that five-year mark something happens an angel sprinkles dust on them or some shit i don't know and they turn spectacular the but, workers party workers party juice the workers yeah, the workers, party yeah yeah the with the party. little yeah the red the, the red book. little oh. little red book and a little uh yeah yeah so but to so, me right. cohibas are they're just so expensive and i'd rather buy like two boxes of siri d number number four or you know a couple boxes of Monte Cristo or, or something you know whatever there's tons of other shit Ramon Alion is specially selected I could probably get three boxes of those for one box of Cohiba Rebusos it's just it's not worth it you know yeah, return on investments there, it's, always, it. it's funny uh, Kubo always makes fun of my Wi-Fi going out but mine has not gone out once tonight I'm just saying we Solid. got a major crack <laughs> here guys so, um, so Aaron did you I, I know me, Can Ben, and Hector me? all picked. Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah. Me, Ben, and Hector okay. all picked the 1964 Padron Torpedo to be the number one cigar. Yeah. Um, did you? I'm sorry. Did you pick your number one? I did the the Monte Cristo. Monte Cristo. He stuck, to, Monte Cristo. he stuck to his guns from earlier this year. Okay. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was the one that waffled off of that. So, Coop, give us your top five and your number one, baby. You're back before your internet goes out again. Give it to us. Hit us with the yeah, one I'm shot. Right. I'm running on the phone. Did someone record on the cloud, actually? I did. Okay, thanks. Okay, great. So my top five, the Rocky Patel 6060. Of course. You hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay, keep, okay, keep, great. Keep I just keep yeah. Okay. Uh, St. Louis Ray, number four. Wow. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to deviate. I'm going to go Patron 50th at the third. Ooh. I don't think okay. they ever give the 64 number one. It just is a pattern that they don't give the 64 to number one. And uh, the number one cigar I'm going, uh, like the number two cigar, excuse me, uh, I'm going with a rare pink. Which one? Uh, the happy ending. Okay. And the number one, uh, I'm going chalk here. I'm going to say it's, uh, Oliva gets a second one this year uh, with the Melania Maduro Churchill. All right. Okay. Uh, so, wow. yeah, my, my thing is the Padron, the one I kind of uh, deviate a bit with is because of they just never seem that that 64 never seems to get over the hump when it comes to this. This is the year, baby. And it's didn't happening. they put a didn't they put a thousand series in the top 25 last yeah. year? Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of went with that. I think that I, I just have a feeling this is a leave it here for whatever reason. They love that Churchill Maduro. Yeah. Yeah, well, the I '64 can't... was number three last year. The Hermosa. Well, I think that cigar makes it. I don't think it makes the top five. Yep. I think I think Oliva makes the top ten, but I don't think Oliva makes the top five this year. I, I just have a feeling. I, I think that Oliva's ready to be in that category of second number one. I'll, I'll be honest. That wouldn't shock me at all. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Padron I had was it. tough to pick. Padron was really tough to pick because there was a lot of Padrones that came in late in the year. Hmm. I, w I took a flyer on the Damaso because you know it's it's Connecticut, it's, it. it's, it's Connecticut. It rated high, you know. It kind of uh, you know two birds with one stone, you know. I like yep. that mar the maroon the maroon band of Damaso, not the white oh, one, the yeah. first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The maroon, it, it, yeah. It, it's almost like two different scars. It is totally. 
One's trash, <laughs> one's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, Jeez, yeah. So right. I think we, it'd be interesting picks. We'll see what happens as this closes out for sure. So everybody should submit there. We should submit you submit the uh, submit our our list to you so we can see how how it shakes out, how we do. Hey Hector, yeah. I got a question. Yeah, for, yeah question for Hector. So I had on, you know, you're talking about your cigars, the 601 Blue Maduro. Yes. Yes. I, feel, I have that on the top 25. You don't think that makes top 25? It's just it's not that I don't think it makes it. I mean, listen, uh, you never know what CA. I mean, they gave the the the, the red a top 15 a couple of years ago. Right. But the, the blue made the blue the blue Toro made the top 25. It was like number six. Back in two thousand nine, so I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I it, it, it could make it. Look, the Habano could make it. I mean, it's a Lancero; they don't usually make you know the top twenty five. But I, the blue is the blue's a stalwart in our catalog in our portfolio. It's a, uh, you know, it's 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 our it's our it's our old line. Uh, it could very well it could very well make it because it's it's a it's an old favorite. I mean, you know, it's it's a coin flip. I just I just think that. The, the 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 warhead making the list really kind of the, the warhead qualifying really kind of it kind of really shocked me a little bit that's why i went in that direction but it could be any of them it could be the tour it could be the hell it could be the lancero who knows okay i got a i got a dark i i didn't put on my list but you guys will probably laugh I, the nat chico anniversary 1965 liga number four toro no oh, that that cigar port not nat chico performs well i i it, it, I, it made top 25 two years ago i think yeah I didn't put it on there, but I would not be surprised to see that make the list. But you'll see, you'll see when these lists, when the list comes out and we compare our list, you know, where I, I put Corvari in and Corvari doesn't make it, maybe Nat, Nat Chicho makes it. You know, it'll be a swap, one for one. This, you know, a, a smaller brand yeah. or another smaller brand. That's what you'll see. For sure, there'll be a cigar that makes the list for the first time this year. I have a tough. I had a tough one finding a first time this year. I took it with twenty five. I took it with Black Horse. That's an interesting one. It's not. It's not. I mean, I could see that's where it would land. Well, you also said Pichardo too. And Pichardo, that's right. Pichardo's another. But Pichardo's gotten close. I mean, he's 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 reviewed high the last couple of years. So I mm. think that's it's you know, and like I said, like we said at the very beginning, you know, uh, you know, Pichardo, Crown Heads, uh, you know. Uh, What's his name? Uh, the uh, guy from Fiat Lux. What's his name? I can't think of his name right now. Luciano. 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 Those those guys are you know, not that we know that they're not interchangeable. We know that they're but they're kind of what you know when you're looking at this, when you only have 25 spots, you know, it's hard. Somebody's gonna somebody and a, a, one of them makes it, it's a victory for all of them. That's the way I look at it. Yep. All right. Um. Hey, Bear, why don't we real quick and then we'll wrap up. We'll do well, one must go to wrap up. Um, okay. Why don't can you can you do your um, can you do your good uh, great things are happening here uh, real quick yeah. while I'm still trying to get back in connection here. And I apologize to our audience. here. We didn't lose the live stream, right? No. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, that's, no that, that's what's important. So I want to mention um, uh, happening here sponsored by Tobacco or ASA. Makers of iconic brands such as Monte Cristo, Romeo Hudetta, H. Upman, and Aging Room Cigars, as well as St. Louis Ray. Uh, tobacco or you say great things are happening here. So, Bear, I'll let you go first real quick. So this one's a really cool I, – I, I, as, our, as our listeners know, I really I, – I read the goodnewsnetwork.org every single day. I look for those great stories, uh, especially the last 18 months. Uh, it's just been a great place to go to daily to find out the good stuff that's that no one's talking about that's going on in the world because there is a lot of good things and a lot of people don't talk about it and we try to do it and we focus on we take a few minutes during our show uh, every other week and we we focus on you know great things that are happening here in life that aren't related to the cigar industry necessarily and so uh, this story is actually really cool and it, it's going to tug at the heartstrings I know of, of Ben too uh, who's on our panel tonight uh fellow dog lover just like me so uh a, a gentleman uh alfie uh kitson he's an 80 year old man uh and he has a five-year-old dog millie who hit the headlines just before christmas uh due to the pet's ability to tidy up uh to tidy up trash that, that was put in the bin so kitson 
uh, and his it's his dog have become a familiar sight in the streets of of, of Hereford. It's it's England in England ever since they moved back to England from Spain. Uh, you know, just when COVID started. So uh, it was one during one of these regular rounds that Alfie spotted uh, was spotted by his sister's husband uh, cleaning up the streets. And so when so this 80 year old man was reunited with his long lost sister, uh, 71 year old sister and for, and, saw him, and and his brother Dave, who's 84, uh, seeing his brother and sister for the first time in 20 years um, because of his you know, constitutional walk with his dog. Uh, so, uh, they had drifted apart, uh, from after moving to, uh, to Spain, you know, two decades ago and, uh, and they hadn't really seen, they hadn't seen each other in 20 years. And it was just this random spotting on the street that, uh, that reunited the family. So that was pretty cool. Very, pretty cool. So, um, nice. Uh, I love I love seeing this. You know, families drift apart for a number of reasons. Friends drift apart for a number of reasons. And so when, you know, they have chance encounters, you know, like this, and then they get to reunite. And you know, you throw a dog in the mix, and it's just always a feel good story. So um, really good stuff. So uh, yeah, great things are happening here every day. Nice. Uh, mine is uh, I think I've mentioned a couple of these great things that are happening here. Um, I'm kind of a mini astronomy buff. Um, not as much as I used to be, but I always get an What's your son? A tiny, tiny astronomy buff, right? <laughs> All right. Um, so mine is on rogue planets. <coughs> so rogue planets are they're defined as like objects, big mass objects in the galaxy that um, – look like planets like and they they seem to think like planets and well not seem like planets. they they seem to look like planets um but what they are is they don't revolve around a star like the sun and um th they've found some of them but recently i guess um there was a group out of europe that discovered about 70 rogue planets in the galaxy and it's the largest amount of these that have ever been produced um they don't know much about what to expect what they found but um it's excited that they've found so many, um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of a cool thing. Like I said, some of these planets are as big as Jupiter, so they're pretty big right now. And um, they have to use some really heavy-duty telescopes to go ahead and do that right now. Um, you know, you, you're not going to be able to use your run-of-the-mill uh, telescopes right now. Uh, but they recently just published these studies, and these uh, – it's kind of, like I said, it's something uh, – you know, I think one thing that I probably won't see in my lifetime, but um, – is this outer solar system exploration, you know, which is, I, I don't think in my lifetime I'll see anything like become more of that, but it is kind of fascinating when you see this stuff like way out there and they find this stuff there right now. Um, and it gives them like, it gives scientists something to kind of pull, pull a rope on with. So 70 rogue planets discovered, uh, kind of a cool thing I thought. And that was also on the, uh, the good news network, uh, story there. So Ew. I kind of like, I, I'm into that. I'm into that. So, yeah, me too. A uh, yeah, little uh, trivia too about what Barry's talking about the Hereford in uh, England. That's also the home of the British SAS, their special forces, the Royal Marines, mm -hmm. who is a precursor or what we've modeled the Navy SEALs off of. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, there's nothing for Hector to make fun of on this year's. Uh... Great things are happening here segment, which is pretty I'm cool. I'm trying really hard and I can't. I can't think of anything. I know. I, I purposely pick something like that. Can't you pick make. on old people, veterans, or dogs, man. Or I never pick well, on veterans. You know, I'm a veteran. Pick, so myself. maybe you could so pick on planets and it wouldn't be uh no nope. wouldn't be too. No, no. Uh, but it, but you gotta go back and watch that Lozona Palooza show last year. <laughs> oh poor poor bear. Oh, you guys look brutal. All right. So that was our, our great things are happening here segment, uh sponsored by Tobacco Air USA. So I want to get it. I have a one must go to kind of close the show out this uh, this year. You want me to um, do it, Coop? Since you're yeah, uh, why, why don't you? But I changed it. Do you know I changed it the last minute? Oh, okay. I changed it earlier today. I changed it earlier today. So look at the notes. The the so if we were a cigar manufacturer, that one. Yes, that's the one. If you okay. were a cigar manufacturer, yeah. yes. Because I think okay. it was a little more interesting to do it, and it kind of it kind of plays into the whole cigar of the year thing. 
Right. Absolutely. So uh, always, guys, our One Must Go segment is always brought to you by United Cigars. Smoke one today and start living United. Uh, makers and distributors of Jose Dominguez, Bandolero, Girlaflo, and the highly acclaimed Atta Bay and Byron lines. Smoke United, live United. Uh, and uh, so this is our One Must Go segment. So, gentlemen, we've all participated in these. We all know the rules. We're going to give you three opportunity three things one's got to go so what's it going to be so if you're a cigar manufacturer and only one person on this panel is uh so this will be interesting to hear that person's uh that person's decision on this i'm really excited to hear his in particular we're gonna we're gonna lead it off with him so hector and everyone else on the panel everyone else is answering this if you're a cigar manufacturer in hector's case you are what what your cigar can only be ranked in uh you oh you changed it could be yeah one of three ways Okay, one so three, one, but one of them so is totally off the table. One of them, one of them. Okay, okay. So one's got to go. Yeah, which one's, one's got to go? What one, one has got to go? Yeah, one's got to go. Sorry, that was worded really weird here in the notes. Okay, so one's got to go. I you mean, can have two of the, you yeah. can have two of the three, Hector. Here we go. You can have a number twenty-five ranked cigar in the cigar aficionado top twenty-five list. You can have the number twenty-five cigar. Uh, you can have the number two half wheel consensus cigar. Or the number one cigar on your favorite media site so and and i know this has already happened for you when else who more takes but you know whatever right um, all right so well that's that's an easy on, one honest, we, we want honest answers I, yeah. honest answers here at 20 all right. well i am i i am not i am not the brand owner i am just a a faithful and loyal employee so i would tell you that uh amazing blender uh, thank you so much i would tell you that I personally would like to be number one on one of my favorite on one of my favorite sites. Uh, he would prefer to be he would prefer to get the CA ranking, and uh, and that's why it's your personal it's your personal thing, yeah. yeah. Half wheel who? <laughs> half, uh... half wheel's got to go, babe. <laughs> that's an easy. I mean, that's an easy one. I could answer that in five seconds, but you know, I can I can do it up a consensus one. Did you guys hear me? Or yeah, look, yeah. look yeah. at Coop, look at Coop showing the restraint on asking Hector what his favorite site is. No, no, I don't want. That's not. I'm not gonna put him on the spot with that. I'm not gonna put him on the spot with that. I'm not listen, either. I just. Listen, I, I almost put. I, I almost the put restraint. developing. I almost put developing palettes on that one. Well, I, look, it, developing palettes would would have to go because I still don't understand how they score. But but I but they're one of them. One, so one, one by pizza reviews is all you need to know how they score. Well, that look, if you, I if you understand one by pizza reviews, you understand developing palettes. I tell everyone. You that. guys, you guys know, you guys, we, we're friends outside of here, and, and uh, listen, uh, you you know my feelings on 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 respect. Respect's big, so I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with I can I can do without the consensus. Uh, so Ben, what, what about you? Let's go over to Ben. Ben, you're a cigar manufacturer. One's got to go. Are you picking the number two consensus on half wheel like Hector, or are you, are you ditching your favorite site? Um, or are you ditching the number 25 ranking on cigar aficionado? Um, I would probably ditch the half wheel number two. Um, I mean, you can't ditch CA because that, no matter what we do, that's what really moves product to humidors. Right. So I would did, couldn't get rid of that one. Number one would just be great. Great honor. Um, yeah, it would definitely be the half wheel number two. Yeah. Especially now, since, you know, anybody who put a list is on the part of the consensus. So, you know, my list isn't eligible. That's right. what I'm saying. But if you, hey, you should get a YouTube channel and change your name. Are you not eligible bear because of the Michaels connection or because you don't review a cigar? Um, according to Charlie, it's because of the Michaels connection. Interesting. Okay. That, that's what he told me. I mean, it could also be both. I but mean, you haven't worked at Michaels in a while, technically, have you? Technically, yes. Mm-hmm. So. Your list could decide the consensus this year. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Kintsugi, I it's, that's, that's, uh, that's Charlie and Brooks's, uh, you know. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay. I was this, and Patrick's decision, idea. you know. Yeah. So. Well, if we went back to the original consensus list, you would be on it. Yeah. Yeah. The original, the Stogie Review one. 
All right, so Aaron, uh, one's got to go. The number 25 cigar on Cigar Aficionado, the number two Half Wheel Consensus pick, or your number one cigar on your favorite media site. All right, so CA's got to stay. I mean, just by nature of it. I'm going to go slightly contrarian, and I'm going to keep the Half Wheel. And I only do that because I think that's a larger representation of success in theory, right? That you've got a collective group of reviewers that have liked your cigar enough to get it high enough on the consensus. And because there's so many people that review cigars and I don't know who my favorite cigar reviewer is, it could be, you know, Joe Blow in the his garage and I love his site and he put me number one and no one even knows who the hell he is and doesn't get any exposure. I'm going to probably go that one off. Joe Blow in his garage. That sounds like El Oso Fumar takes. Well, I didn't want to call you out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I would I would go with the uh, the individual accolade, unless, of course, it was your list, Bear, or Coop was my number uh, one. And, of course, I would keep you guys. But I'll, I'll, I'll go with the uh, Joe Blow garage guy uh, getting taken off. All right, Coop, so I'm going to go ahead in front of you here. Um, so, I, again, this the, the question being posed is if I'm a cigar manufacturer. So I, I'm not a cigar manufacturer. I am a media person. So as a media person, there's one that's going to definitely stay on this list. But as a manufacturer, I have to look at this from a business uh, point of view, right? So from a business point of view, making the top 25 on CAA is, is, is a it, it moves the needle. It moves the needle. It's proven. It moves the needle. So I'm absolutely going to keep the cigar aficionado ranking. Uh, to your point, Aaron, I think you got to. I think you nailed it with the half wheel consensus. It means that you know we we I you know my cigar scores high on not just my fav potentially my favorite media list, but on a lot of lists. So that means it's pretty well liked among a you know a more you know another diverse group of of smokers. And so I, I think uh, the half full consensus has got to stay and I would ditch the, my favorite media site. And as much as that, that pains me because I am a media person, but, <laughs> but again, this is from a cigar manufacturer perspective. So I, that's, that's, if I was running a business, um, those would be the two that I pick because I think <laughs> one moves the needle uh, and makes me more money. And, you know, um, and it's not always about money, uh, which is where the consensus comes in. Cause then you're well loved by a lot of people. All right, Coop, your turn. Yeah, um, if, like I said, if I was a media person doing this, it would be a very different answer. I'd knock the CA one off because of my competition, but that's not the, what the question was. Um, I look at some examples of uh, – I actually looked at the consensus and some examples of number twos, and I remember Jose Blanco got it with Senoro one year at number two. Uh, Robert Holt got it one year at number two with uh, the Southern Drawer, Jacob's Ladder. Um, I like to think that they got some sort of a boost from that and that people paid attention to it because right now people do pay attention. You can say what you want about the consensus. They pay attention to it right now. So I would, I would definitely knock off that number one from my favorite site. Even if I love the site and they're like my best friend and it's not something in a garage, I think I still would go with that number two until something changes and the, and the consensus doesn't mean much anymore. So I know it's not the popular answer, but that's what I would do. But I thought it was an interesting thing. I thought about putting it as number one, but I think that would change the answer for some folks possibly. Potentially. So, potentially. All right. All right. That was our one must go segment. Here. And we're at the, and I apologize for the internet connections I've had here. Um, but that's actually at all I had to say. Is there anything else people want to just talk about before we close out here on this no. marathon show? No, I'm or, beat up, man. We did, we, we yeah. pulled another four hour one. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, do you have more meetings with Guy tomorrow? No, I don't. I, I didn't meet with him at all today. I didn't meet him. I didn't see him today. I was busy moving my mother. I'm moving my mother into a into an apartment. So, my 91 year old mother into an apartment. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. Well done. Yeah. Well done, Hector. That's a boy. Yep. 
But uh, exciting news, I guess, on the uh, the knuckle sandwich. So uh, congratulations to you guys on that. I know you guys have been working on that for a while. Um, yeah. And I think that people are gonna be excited about that for sure. So, yeah, he's very, he's very, he's very happy. He seems very excited, and he's been, you know, he's been hands on on it. He wanted, you know, wants to taste cigars, wants to know about them, you know. And it's a guy. It's it's it, and he's just an he's just a normal guy, you know, which is great, you know. He has no airs, yeah. which is good. Did he, did he have a session in your office? Did you have like one of those sessions in the office? Like you do, I noticed you do that with a lot of people. You're doing blends for. Did you have one of those classic sessions? No, we had since he's kind of a you know he you know we did it in the conference room. You know, we wanted to have more space. But he was he was he was into it, man. I'm telling you, he he smoked it. He smoked a lot. He smoked a lot that day. So we're happy. With, I think we're I think we're we're in a good place, and he seems to be happy with uh, what we're doing. And hell, the guy for him with his busy schedule. For him to come down for a couple of days and hang out with Eric and and go visit shops is a big deal, you know. Yeah, I bet. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. I'm a huge oh, yeah. I'm a huge fan, so I'm, oh, I'm yeah. super I'm oh, super yeah. excited. Yeah, I mean that everybody. Guy, that, guy is, that guy does more stuff than I mean I don't know how he, he even has time between the amount of shows he does and everything else. It's crazy. Yeah, he's got a lot. He's high energy, man. He's high energy, and everybody, every every I, the feedback I got today, every shop he went to, everybody just you know. Everybody was fawning over him, which is great, you know. So I think is it's going to be. Gonna, it, is he going to do any events with it, or is it? Or I, is I it, don't. I don't know that part. That's between him and Eric. But I'm sure. I'm. I'm. I'm sure that if he, he understands that for any cigar to succeed, there has to be events, you know, connected to them. So, uh, I'm sure that we'll work it around his schedule. But you know, it's a. Uh, it's a national thing. He's all over the place. He does his diners, drive-ins, and drives, and. And you know he does his other show, uh, the shop, the shopping show. So we'll we'll work around it. And it's something he wants to he wants to do it. And since uh, he's got a lot of interest in doing it, so I know it's not going to fail. Right. All right. And I didn't mention this because I got cut off. We were going to talk about the Espinosa pick. Um, I didn't mention what my Espinosa pick for the list, and I think it's going to be again. You're going to be in that 11 to 20 range, but I'm going blue label. Maduro torpedo. That's what Aaron said. Or Aaron, Aaron, Aaron said he liked that yeah, one as that's well. Why, that's why I got kind of cut off. But I think that checks the box. I think Lancero doesn't, and I think you're right about Warhead says. So, um, but it's just like I said. It's nice to be reviewed, and it's nice to get the, it's nice to get the rating, and it's nice to be in the conversation. You know, yeah. we've been in the conversation almost every year for the last five. So that's, that's good for a company our size. That's really good. All right. All right. Uh, Bear. Anything else we want to close out with? No, I uh, just appreciate my appreciate our audience tonight hanging with us really late. Appreciate my audience for tuning in on Sunday for my top ten list, uh, and appreciate the patience as I'm you know getting going through this uh, personal move. Just like Ben, uh, he he's having it a lot harder than me. He moved across country. I'm just moving across town, and and it's it's proven to be a beaten. So um, I appreciate everyone's patience with it. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be on with you, fine gentlemen. Uh, this is one of my favorite shows each year. I love doing this. I, I can't um, wait to have you guys back if you want to do it. You guys all did great tonight. So, yeah, really, uh, um, it made it made the show, I think, one of, despite my internet connection, one of the best ones we had. So, uh, cool. I've been doing this since 2017. This show is older than the primetime show, keep in mind. So, nice. Uh, yep. So, all right. Uh, thank you, Aaron, Ben, Hector, Bear. Um, just on Thursday night, uh, primetime episode 215, uh, we are going to have on Antonio Lamb from Renato Cigars. He's kind of a guy making a comeback in the industry right now. Antonio had a pretty good following a few years ago with a lot of folks, particularly in the media. And that was some cigars that were, were some really good cigars, and I think he's made a pretty good comeback right now. So we're, we're glad to have him on it. It's been challenging this month. A lot of folks have been either traveling or have COVID right now. So we, uh, we do have guests lined up for all the Thursday shows this month, which is good. And I think on, um, I think on the, the final Thursday, we're going to do a live, a live connection with someone from TPA. We have a couple of folks who said they'd give us some airtime. We're going to be on. We won't be at TPA, but we'll have some folks on the floor who are willing to kind of come on to us. So we'll work that out, and that will be the last show of the month. All right. That's going to wrap up primetime episode. Primetime Special Edition, number 113 in the Annals of History for this Tuesday, January 4th. Happy belated birthday to Charlie Daniel, by the way. And uh, I think he's going to work that in. I'd do it. I waited to the end. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Wednesday, Christ. January 5th for us in the Eastern time zones. 
Uh, we'll see everybody on Thursday. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.